This is the Grandastic Podcast. First time we're using this. Usually I use Zoom. Um, but then a friend told me about this. Uh, try Riverside. And like they said, it's better and your camera will be better and all this stuff. But anyways, welcome. It's very official. I like Thank it. you. We got to level up a little here, but welcome to grandtastic carly thank you thank you for having me how are you doing i'm doing good i am definitely adjusting i just moved to paris as you know um i kind of when i got here i was like oh it's gonna be fine i've done this before i lived here for a month in august i'm like i got this and it's definitely been a process and i'm just taking it like baby steps i'm like one month and you got this girl but yeah, I'm still like kind of getting in a rhythm and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honest. Yeah, we'll get all. There's so many questions I have about Oops. all of that. It, it's I like people for you don't know. Like I've been waiting to do this podcast with Carly uh, for a minute. We we were supposed to do it like in December or January or whatever, but shit happens. But we're here now. Best podcast ever about to happen. So. Uh, I so I guess let's just start. When was it that you reached out? I think it was like in. I think it was in October or something yeah. and I had I was at traveling at that point and I was like I'm about to be all over the place <laughs> yeah I'm, it was it was October that was wow that was a while ago but yeah I mm -hmm. randomly found you on insta and here we are now man it's, it's beautiful the war how it works the universe man um i love it i love the film community i'm so happy that we connected on there like i don't think i've met a film a uh, film photographer or even just like a hobbyist on instagram that i haven't liked so far like i i just yeah connect with all of them i don't know i love the film community 100 percent. i think it's interesting how like i look at like you know the film community and i look at the music community and the film community is like very like they're pure they're like they're nice they're good folks and they're willing to help mm -hmm in the music community it's more like there's good people but it's like no one wants to give up their secrets because like it's a, it's, a, it's a competitive uh industry and everything so you got to figure it out on your own or at least you if you have some talent or something so it's a uh, weird you know looking at the two but yeah the film community has been great everyone's been sweet that makes sense and it probably because film is more of a hobby for a lot of people because it's so expensive yeah. so it's like i feel like that's more of the vibe it's not the same competitive i don't know if i know many photographers like where they they're all in on film yeah I, most of most of them like have it as like a little side hobby and then are just digital exactly because i don't think well I, I don't know for sure if people still like hiring people to shoot film i don't know if that's the yeah. uh, because that's, you know, everyone likes digital and it's more efficient and, you know, money and everything and film, you only get one shot and yeah. you get to wait. So um, exactly. It's uh, exactly. It's interesting for sure. But let's start. Mm -hmm. let, I'm curious. So let's start with Carly's life. So like, so people understand who this person is here. You were remember you're telling me you're from like SoCal, LA and area. Yeah, born and raised. I grew up in in Santa Monica first, moved to Manhattan Beach. So if, if I don't know if you're familiar with the area, but Manhattan Beach is more like the South Bay, more 100%. small town. My mom's from um, Long Beach, then, so yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. And then I moved back to um, to West LA when I was like around 15. So I got a, like a lot of different experiences throughout the city. I got like what is considered the city and then I got considered what's more like the beach towns mm -hmm. but when I moved back to LA they're like oh no you're not from LA when I said that I was from Manhattan Beach I was like, people are like I don't know yeah I mean that in LA there's like there's more of I, I'm happy I got both sides of it because I think there's there's like there's the spiritual people and then there's like the very like down to earth more like small town people and then there's the people that come there just because of like the clout yeah and the... 100 100 percent. that's my beef yeah. with la because like i'm from born and raised in norcal so like i'm not no hate it's just i love norcal people a little bit more just because I... I don't know like la people like you said they're here for the cloud or like they put this mask over their face and they just they're here for the trends instead of just being true to yourself and they're worried how 
other people are going to look at them instead of just focusing on yourself. And it's such a, it's, it seems intense and stressful. And like, why, why put all that stress on you? You got other shit you got to deal with in life. Totally. It's, it's soul sucking, honestly. And same, I'm about to say the same thing. No hate because this isn't everyone's experience, but it's my experience. I got I like kind of just like woke up one day and I was like, why am I here? Like, I don't like it here. And I, I don't, I'm, I don't care about followers and looks and like who, you know, like that's so not me. I wasn't raised that way. And that was kind of what I was surrounded with. And I just like woke up to it and I was like, what am I doing here? This was in 2021. So yeah, born and raised there, like spent my whole life there. And when I moved back after college, I kind of only did it because I was in a relationship at that time and long term. And he was like, I only want to be here. So I like made the sacrifice. I'm like, okay. And then four years went by after that, that I was living there, not really happy there. Um, And I feel like the pandemic just like shook shit up for everyone. And like made yeah. you like just wake up to all the things in your life that you were not sitting right with you anymore. And that's kind of what happened to me with LA. I had my best friend move back to Canada and she like couldn't, long story short, she couldn't move out of the apartment herself. She like couldn't come back because of quarantine. And I like moved out her apartment for her. And on the drive from her apartment back to my apartment, I just start like, <laughs> I'm just going to go all out and share every detail. I just start bawling and I'm like, I can, I can barely see the, see the road. And I'm like, and it just dawned on me. I'm like, do I even like it here? I was like, okay, Carly, it's time to reevaluate. We got to, we got to make some moves here. It's like the matrix, man. It's like you find, you have your like spiritual, like at least like a awakening. Like you realize like this life you live in it, like people are get sucked in about the job and, you know, you're, you're this, the, you know, financial lifestyle and like, you know, living good and showing what you have to your expenses, but it's not about that. Like I feel, I feel, I feel all of that, you know what I mean? And it's, uh, yes. I wish more people realize that. And that's great to hear that you realize. And like, especially like, I feel, especially like the relationship, like you have someone there and it's like, you care and stuff, but it's like, you gotta do what's best for you. And that's like this whole, like, this whole topic to basically to be around about self balance. Balance is like the huge thing I've realized since 2019. Like this is, it's like everything I realized in my life is like, you got to have a balance because you can't have one thing more than the other. It will just end bad. I'm not joking you Grant (laughs) this morning. I have a lot of like inner dialogue, obviously because I'm living alone in a foreign country, like all by myself. (laughs) And I swear to you this morning, I said to myself, I was like, why the fuck is balance so important? Like, I'm so bad at it. I'm not good at this. I'm a very extreme person. I like to go like all into this hobby, all into Mm. like, I'll either go all into my health and then I like forget about my work or like go all into dating. And then I like forget about the social, like my other social life. Like I, that's been my uphill battle throughout life. Same. And I'm finally like just at this age being like trying to reel it in and really work on that. But it's so important. It is everything. It's everything. I wish it wasn't, but it is everything. It really is. And it's like, I, 100% 100% feel the same way I get it I think also like like at least for me like I have ADD so like my like I just yeah yeah I, I assume I have the idea like like we just like vibed I was like this is my sis this is my sister she gets it like so I felt that way with everyone too that I've met that has ADD like it's kind of just like an initial energy like connection 100% I think it's just you know like our our brains are just ping pong balls like or whatever our minds and we're just thinking like crazy and it's like And like, for sure, when I was younger, it was worse. But I think, you know, like my cousin who has it, and he just told me like, when you get older, like you mellow out and like you realize and like, I think it's like you're like, I'm no doctor. So if I get it wrong, folks, you can comment whatever in the bottom, but like your dopamine, your frontal lobes or whatever the fuck it is, like they, they, they just kind of mature and then they just kind of chill the fuck down. And yeah, I, that's like the biggest struggle because I feel it like you like fine I, I go into it. like like relationships take that for example like you you meet someone you go uh head over heels whatever the term is and it's like you meet someone and it's great 
but then you get burnt out a little because you kind of like a firecracker and then you're like what the fuck that's why taking it slow is so important because you don't want to get burned out yes oh my god i don't know if this is an add thing but i get i'm so passionate about the things that i like like people Mm -hmm. um hobbies places that i go like so hard into it and it's that same thing it's like a crash and burn and that's kind of what i did with film too it was just like yeah (laughs) yeah i i i feel like i've heard just like i listened to some of your podcasts which i loved and I have heard you talk on your posts and stuff and I and I feel like we kind of vibed with this that once I found it I was just like that that was it I, I was all into it and I was spending all my money on the roles yeah. and developing a hundred the cameras yeah um but yeah that's what kind of actually let me into developing at home because I was I, I was like I can't just something didn't sit right with me that I you was inspired handing me off to my do the same head. now so yeah Oh, I love it. I didn't. Do you know what I mean? It was like, mm-hmm. I felt I don't like feeling like an amateur, amateur, especially when I'm just like going so deep into this. Oh, hobby. Yeah. I, like, I want to know this in and out. I want to know everything about it. So when I, I, I truly would hand my film over to the lab and I'm not classically trained in photography. It's not like I did darkroom in college or anything like that. Um, so I truly didn't know anything about it when I would hand it over to them. And then when I got my kit and I got like all the chemicals, I was like, holy shit, this is intense. And yeah, it was, I don't know, after I did the, the at home developing and I was involved in like every step of the process, that's when I was like, okay, I I feel complete now. I get it. I feel that because, well, also just like realizing how expensive it was. Like when I realized like you had to pay at least like maybe 25, 40, whatever dollars, you know, for developing one or two roles, it was kind of blew my mind. And it's like, like, again, kind of jumped into it. And the reason why I started was because like I saw my like great grandfather's like book when he was in like World War One and I guess World War Two, I should say. And, uh, you know, just these like, pictures of him and he was like an RAF he was British and everything and like just seeing the photos and I was like then like your grandkids look at it so that's why I'm building like a uh I don't know what the word is oh fuck I've been saying it so long uh a little book for people to look at when like my grandkids or kids or whatever you want to call it um so yeah I love that I'm stealing that idea go ahead go ahead it's uh Damn, I really wish I knew what the term was, but if I, it'll come back to me maybe later. But yeah, so that's why we started. But like, yeah, I got into it, got like an AE one, started with that, and then that's like, why I yeah, and then got really into it. And then I found out like my dad on my dad's side, like my grandfather, uh, like he was into film, like very like he had his own dark room, I guess, in like in their basement, and like like I never met him, but like it just blows my mind. Like I could feel that same passion because I saw, found out he has all these photos. And he had like an original Leica and then like I got to see it. It doesn't work now, but like, you know, I have it over over there and just like to look at it and then, you know, got so into it. I saved up and like spent some of my rent money on a Leica and that was probably not the <laughs> best idea. I about this. Yeah. On the M6. Was <laughs> it worth it? I don't know, but we paid it off. So, I mean, that's what matters here. But um <laughs> Yeah, that has kind of been my realization. It's like every time I buy a new camera, I'm always like, "Was it worth it?" <laughs> I don't know. Like, I truly, I don't know if you feel this way. I loved the AE one. It broke when I went to mm-hmm. White Sands. Like, all the sand got in it, and now I really miss it. And that was like, I think I've got it for like a hundred sixty or something. Mm. Okay, but yeah. Necessary isn't necessarily like the more expensive. I'm realizing mean like the more I'm gonna like the shots or the look of the shots. Because right now I'm shooting on a Canon EOS 3, which is like the most high tech of the Canon film cameras that you can get. And at first I was like, oh, this is awesome. And I love it. And it's great. I like for prints, which is what I'm working on right now. It's amazing. And the quality is incredible. I can change my digital lens lenses and put it on the film camera that's body, amazing. which is awesome. I love it. Can't complain. And, and that's what it, but, that's what matters. You know what I mean? Like, like it's the lenses like you can have like the a one's yeah. great if you, as long as you have a sharp lens that's all that matters you don't need a leica like you just need a sharp so lens true. same thing with digital like whenever anyone asks me like 
or when they're like, oh, I don't want to buy, I have the Canon 5D. I was like, if you're going to, if you're going to go serious into photography, like just, I wouldn't buy a beginner camera. I would just go right in. And because I, I was bummed that I bought like all these other cameras before the Canon 5D. Cause I was like, I wish I just used that money to spend it on the mm -hmm. 5D. And they're like, well, I don't have the money. And I'm like, okay, then buy a lens. The lens is like, you can get a $50 or no, 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 a 50, a 50 millimeter, like really, um, really great F-stop low aperture mm -hmm. lens for $150. Oh, yeah. And it, the quality from it is, is it's unmatched. It's amazing. And I don't think people know that. And I think people go crazy buying crazy expensive cameras yeah man you can you can go in debt with that shit it's kind of insane mm -hmm. so i i totally understand i think like that's something i've been realizing like as long as you know like you see you're gonna do this in the long run don't buy the beginner thing buy the one-time payment and just stick with it because like i only have an ae1 in the leica and but like i never i mean the a one's great but i never shoot on it anymore just because i, I just like 28 millimeter and I do a lot of street photography and I love that wide. So like, it just, I just go out there and I love rangefinders. They're just, just, I don't know, my ADD. I just love I've them. never shot with one. Range find, yeah, try. If you ever get one, you know, it doesn't have to be a Leica. It could be a Canon P or whatever. It can be anything. Um, but yeah. Your the shots are amazing though. Thank you. Do I, You know what my favorite shots are? And I kind of mentioned this last week. I don't know why I love your home shot so much when the light is is pouring oh, in and it yeah. just you can just feel the moment that it's just like it's just like quiet and peaceful and like it it when I look at it I'm like I know that's morning because of the feeling mm -hmm. that you captured there and I think that's so fucking cool you know oh hundred percent those are my favorite too and I like those are the ones that do the best I realize like. I get like every film photographer friend whoever follows me they're like love this where is this and it's like this is just my kitchen every morning i just wake this up kitchen. early and you know because i'm an early bird so like i wake up early and it's it's there and i'm just like even though i have too many pictures of my kitchen it's just like we try to change it up and yeah i don't know it's just like it's never enough it's just <laughs> the yeah it does not exist yeah <laughs> <laughs> like it's just really it's very peaceful especially in the morning here in san francisco um it's just you know you hear like the harbor ships coming in because i live right i live in the marina so like i'm right there so you hear the ships you hear the seagulls like yeah oh. it's just a very and that that smell of san francisco yeah it smells like shit a little but like the other good smells like the ocean breeze it's uh it's all worth it's it. it's all <laughs> worth it man it's so good i miss that like i really am enjoying living in a city i like the energy a mm -hmm. lot but like I, I'm, I grew up by the beach. I'm always gonna mm. miss the ocean. I think I love, I love that. Like oh, that, yeah. that's the California in me. That's just like ingrained in me forever. No, definitely. And like that was a huge conversation I was having with someone. Is that like, yeah, people call San Francisco a city, but I think it's just like a big town. Like I think of New York and I think of like L.A. Like those are cities, or like Chicago. San Francisco is just a big town. That's how I feel. It's just a giant town, not full city yet or something. Yes. Oh, I love that. I haven't really explored San Francisco that much because it's so expensive. Yeah, yeah. I went. I stayed at the biggest shithole when I went. <laughs> I stayed for like 24 hours. It was all I could afford. It's... And I loved it. But I didn't stay even long enough to realize like how big it is or like see everything that I was there. But everything i imagine it's so beautiful to walk around there with your camera and just like it's so there's more nice history there. uh, oh a hundred percent yeah if you ever come to san francisco you're always welcome to stay here at grantastic for sure because like yeah, couch surfing that. is the move i get it i always do it with people and like yeah sf yes. is really really expensive but like it's kind of gone down per se you know because like when the delta variant hit like that's when i moved here and uh i was gonna say covid yeah was like oh yeah forever. covid was a savior I for me that's weird too because i'm paying half of what i paid in la like people are like oh paris is so expensive but i'm still paying half of what i paid when i was living in la so oh yeah i'm paying yeah, maybe half for sure and i talked amazing. to my neighbors and they're like how the fuck are you paying that and i was like i don't know but it's a one-year deal and then it's it's like in san francisco there's a lot like once you whatever you pay now it like they can't never raise it maybe only like one percent so 
like oh, wow. they protect you in that kind of form of way and it's like i'm like okay i am set for oh, life yeah. for a while so yes. i love it <laughs> so yeah but i mean i guess like going into like because I, I saw like you travel a lot like you bounce around do you would you say you like what got you into this i guess we'll start there that so rewind back in um when i'm 22 mm -hmm. this was a long time ago this was seven years ago um and i had been in this relationship i'd we were at long distance and we knew we wanted to travel together once we um once i graduated mm -hmm. and i was like babysat all throughout college saved up a good amount of money i worked summers um teaching and i basically traveled for one year with ten thousand dollars in my pocket like mm -hmm. it but like one it was like a, i think it was 13 months 14 months straight or something of travel mm -hmm. Which was so, I was, I was basically, I was basically spending half of what I would have paid in LA to like travel the world. Mm -hmm. I was going all throughout Southeast Asia, cheaper places in Europe. So it made sense. People were like, well, how are you able to do this? Yeah. But I, I, I think people, it's, it, it's so much more affordable than a lot of people think, especially if you do the research and like you find the places where the dollar is really good. Mm -hmm. Um, and through that, like, so basically I always had this like passion for travel, but through that, that's when I started a travel blog and that that's like what got me into this whole digital space with my Instagram and everything. Um, and at that point, Instagram hadn't really taken off yet. It was like, I think a year fresh and before everyone and their mother was like a travel blogger, you know, and yeah. you know, at one point it seemed like everyone's just doing hundred <laughs> percent. I I kind of got into it at a time where it, like it wasn't seen yet, and I was just that's it just happened to line up with my life that like Instagram was taking off while I was doing that, and so I grew my following through that, and that's how I was able to see a lot of places early on in my twenties, and then. After that, I was like, I'm hooked. I need to keep doing this. And then I kind of segued into retreats where I was leave leading travel retreats. And I would go on about like four retreats a year and we'd go for like three weeks each time. Nice. So I was living nomadically because of the travel blogging and um, like that. And that allowed me to collaborate with people and, and work with people through that and then through retreats. Um, and that was pretty much for like five years, I'd say. And then when the pandemic hit, that's when I kind of just like started staying put again. And then as soon as it opened up again, I was like, I'm going cross country and I'm going, but well, not like opened up, but, but yeah. like, like got a little more safe and, mm -hmm. Actually, like when Europe, I was so nervous about the Delta variant and closing down. I was like, I don't want to be stuck in the U.S. The, the verbiage, yeah. or like the, the lines I was getting from a lot of my friends were like, I don't want to be stuck in Europe. And I was like, no, I don't want to be stuck, stuck in the U.S. US. I'm getting over to Yeah, Europe. man, the U.S. is fucked. Sorry for anyone who's like a patriot <laughs> out here. You got to wake up, America. <laughs> Shit. I'm just, I feel like it, as a film photographer, too, like you uh, it's so great being here i i personally love and i think a lot of people that shoot film can agree like i love shooting things that already have that vintage old historical feel oh, because yeah. on film it just like amplifies it a hundred percent anything back from that from those years like you know 60s 50s 40s you know 70s whatever it's amazing like i feel it like yeah. like the leica i love like back there like that's a rickenbacker and like for people who don't know that like the beatles used to use that guitar in the, like like late 50s early 60s you know like that was like the guitar they used and then like over here i have like a tape machine a reel to reel like with how they record and a sitar if you know what that is an indian instrument so like it's uh mm -hmm. you know like and vinyl like like the whole it's just their artifacts yeah. it's it's something that you can hold and feel and you know you can appreciate and like I don't know, like something, someone who like works on something mechanically, I have more appreciation for it than like technology in a way. I don't know if that like, that just resonates with me more for some reason. And they're hardy. They totally. last longer. 
you take good care yes but yeah i feel you ever shot your instruments on film yes 100 percent. i i have a photo i think my favorite one is like i have this colorful one of like the real the real and my sitar um they just like the light hit it perfectly in the morning. And I just took the picture. So you see the shadow of the sitar with all of like, you know, uh, the knobs, you can say, you know, to turn the tuning. In. And there's like about 24, 25. So you just see them all in the shadow. Like, and it's like, I don't know, it's just a really cool picture. And like, I'm trying to find, yeah. get one of my like, you know, film friends who I've met in the Bay Area, take some photos of Grant while we're playing, maybe behind yeah. the Golden Gate Bridge, you know, so um it. it's it's yeah it's yeah definitely it's it's amazing but i feel the traveling like you were saying like and like getting out of america like yeah i'm here and stuff but i think like you know you're in france and we'll get to that i want to talk about that for sure but like i feel that because like i want to like i think like the calling for me is like new zealand i don't know something about new zealand like first of all i love the their prime minister she's so amazing banning guns you know you know nipping yeah nipping covid in the butt like you know he she i mean she she's just and then getting uh uh one of the tribe people there at, on the council like as a council member like i don't see we have any native americans in congress sadly to say like so like they're she's like killing it out there like or just doing a phenomenal uh, like phenomenal yeah phenomenal job and uh yeah. I just, and she's, and I think shout out to women power. Fuck. Yeah. We have too many old yes. white head men. So like, um, it's, yeah. And you didn't even mention either that New Zealand's nature is just the most yeah. outrageous thing. Yeah. I, my, one of my life goals is to, um, camper van, like van life through mm. New Zealand and Australia. Oh yeah. The nature there is just, it's, I haven't seen anything like that. And I, I, I think it's, is it, I don't know if I'm going to butcher this. Is it lupus, the flower, the, with the pink or the, the purple? You know what? I can't answer that because I, I don't, lupus. I, it is not lupus. Okay. That is a disease. That sounds like a disease for sure. I was going to say that sounds like a, like <laughs> shit. I was like, lupus. but I could not so answer disease. that part. What'd you say? I do not know because I don't know my flowers, but it sounds close the first time you said it sounded like a disease a little we're gonna go with lupin okay for, we're gonna go with lupin we don't know if it's correct but we're gonna go with it we're just gonna so go. anyways there's this purple flower and it hangs over like this and they grow in these huge massive fields and you can just like drive right through them there's like a backdrop of all of these white capped mountains in the back and it looks just so magical it, it reminds me almost I think it's like an island thing because when I was um, road tripping Iceland, I road tripped the ring road mm -hmm. and w I was with two other travel bloggers and it, every single turn we'd be like, Oh my God. Oh my God. It's like, it's like the ecosystem. I don't know what, it, what it about it or like maybe the latitude and the longitude is so different from other, other places on, on this planet. Mm -hmm. It's sites that you'll never see anywhere else in your life. And oh, I, I, I know, I, I know that's going to be New Zealand for me too. Like when I went to ice and I was like, Holy shit, I need to do. These, oh yeah. These I, be trips. I believe it because like traveling is like, it's amazing like i've been to australia i went to the great barrier reef in 2013 with my family and my cousins and like like the coral like the fish and everything it's i don't know what it is right now i'm gonna be honest i don't know if it is what it was in 2013 but i'm you just know, gonna say that you're so lucky yeah it was it was amazing then there's like this giant fish they call mar marvin and it's like this like roper fish or whatever it scared the fuck out of me how big the lips were. It was just like, but it just swims around you. I and it just, you fuck you up. Yeah, that those fucking things. I was like, oh my god, what is this thing? Thought it was gonna eat me. <laughs> but um, yeah. My friend's mom got bit in the Great Barrier Reef by one of those fish. Okay. You don't mess around. With okay. Those. Okay. I'm glad Valid I, fear. that's why I had my distance no matter what. And the guy's like, you'll be fine. I was like, Your instinct. my instinct's like, fuck that. Not getting near it. I'm fine to be with these little Nemo fishes over here. Nemo fishes. So that's, that's my comfort. So yeah, man, it's, uh, it, yeah. Australia is just an, it just seems like a great place in New Zealand. I've never been, but like I have friends who've like done abroad there or like back in college, like they would like do like, you know, 
exchange program. So like they would come and then someone else would take their spot and uh, they were just telling me it's amazing. So um, yeah, I don't know. Like it just inspires me. And like, I don't know if you ever seen the movie of uh, the secret life of Walter Mitty. No, wait, I told you about this movie. I remember I told you about this movie a while back. Um, yes. Okay. I don't remember. I know I saw it. Like, I think, I think I saw it so long ago because is it the one that has the insane, um landscapes it's like you know yeah ben stiller's in it and like yeah yeah yeah. it's just you know he goes to iceland i think or greenland and like he just like he works at life magazine and like he realized he does an adventure so he tries to find the photographer to get the photo and like he goes around the world and try and find him and like also they have great indie folk music and it just makes you want to get out and just go out into the world so yes oh i love that i'm gonna watch it again yeah there were so many movies that we talked about that i added to my list oh yeah you gotta watch when you were them. talking i was like wait you like everything that i like so yeah i'm, I'm telling i mean yeah it's it's 2013 movies man her begin again secret life of walter mitty all these movies i didn't ever you must look into like the um the history of of films because when you said that i was like oh i've never really like looked into it like you knew that they were all from 2013 yeah well i just i just realized is it a style that like kind of just flowed throughout all the filmmaking i think well i just realized i just remember vividly like 2013 was just great for movies i was just connecting them like with no other person and like (laughs) you were vibing (laughs) and like i don't know who the what they were doing back then but they were just like the movies were good and like they're just like inspirational and i don't know what that was the theme or something but like you know hers about loneliness and like trying to understand Mm -hmm. that and i still go back to that movie sometimes and just like you know not like look at the character but realize like what are the scenes and how they create this feeling and tension through the music and and all that and it's like it's it's yeah like that that's a whole other topic like you know feelings are like it, it matters and i think I think honestly, 2013, all those movies were about like loneliness. Maybe I think that's what it was when I'm looking back, like Walter Mitty, he's like, look, he, he's lonely in a way, you know, and yeah. he fi- realized like traveling is the way to do it. And he finds love in that. And also the girl who works at the office too. Um, he mm-hmm. realized it's better to be busy than just waiting on her. And then like, so, and then yes. begin again, is like with Mark Ruffalo and I forget who else, uh, you know, artist. Here Nightly. I know Here Nightly, right? Yeah. I know what movie you're talking about. I just have never seen it. Yeah, that movie's great. And like, like they, like they don't fall in love or anything, but like they, 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 there's a friendship that builds, and then he, he rebuilds his connection with his daughter and ex-wife, and like the movie's great. And and honestly, I bought a splitter. If you know what that is, when you take two aux cords and then you connect it to one phone. Literally bought a splitter for this just to find that groovy girl someday. I have the splitter. And I'm gonna use it that when we and then we'll go to a club and then we'll just listen to our own music. I have that I on the bucket this. list. I love this so much. Hundred <laughs> percent, man. That is splitters. It, Wait, do splitters still work anymore with our technology? Well, you got to get like yeah. a dongle, whatever you know, like for the iPhone. Yeah. But but I already I already have one. It's all set. You just gotta have the headphones, and we're about to listen to some Stevie Wonder to maybe. Some... I know it's gonna happen for you. Yeah, you are. You already know. So it's mm-hmm. um, it's uh, it's it's cool how movies can inspire you like that. And I think traveling is so important for everyone. I think, you know, like you were talking about, like how your friends were saying, like, how do you do this? How do you? It's like, it's not that hard. You just gotta realize, like, like what you're paying in LA versus what, that all that money could go for traveling and also you just gotta be frugal with your money you know and just don't go spending random shit that you don't need exactly it's priorities it's like what the difference is like i don't i buy clothes like twice a year and yeah. i only buy like the basics and i don't spend on like i'm not i don't spend on material things because i'm like just putting everything that i have into traveling Mm -hmm. and i think that's the difference that people don't realize it's like the sacrifices that you have to make in order to make traveling a priority and then it becomes way more doable oh a hundred percent i think you just gotta you gotta be smart and you gotta realize what what's what do you want to spend on and like what's important to you and what's your goals or aspirations and you know it can happen like people like you can't let that mentalness like where it gets negative and like say it never will happen because then it will never happen. And it's like, yeah, I, I get that 100%. Yeah. And like lately, I haven't really shot any film 
because like we're working on like the dark room and everything right now but also like you know kind of having my like my ups on film now we're kind of having our downs and now we're more focusing on like saving money to travel and also a little bit like like the music because like this is what i do for a living and i do need some yeah. gear to work with people and i have been neglecting that so uh yeah we're just kind of yeah go ahead I've been in the same down right like dip right now too. I like spent all this money on moving and I'm like really trying to like budget right now and and freaking film prices of in 2022 just like skyrocketing. Oh, yeah. it's Think, ridiculous. I'm so happy that I had stocked up on like a on I got like five or ten rolls actually of same. Portra eight hundred went before it skyrocketed. Um, and I'm so happy. I'm, but but what it's doing is like, I'm not shooting. I have no desire to shoot mm -hmm. because I'm like, now I'm co so conscious about the, uh, elevated film prices. I did a little add up mm -hmm. of everything I spent in 2021 on my film. And that just shook me to my core. And I was like, fuck, you need to make some changes. Yeah, or like make some extra money for this. Like, that's what I was realizing. Exactly. Because exactly. It's so I'm about to sell prints hopefully a uh, launch in february but then i when i thought about it i was like the money i make from that is literally just to support the hobby like i don't think that i'm gonna make like a profit of a, uh, on it or anything it's it's truly just to buy my film and to go get it developed oh literally I saying <laughs> like i love when he said that when he's saying prince i was like i'm do what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we gotta make we gotta make that cash somehow. Yeah, because it is it's really an expensive pop. Did you see what I posted about the um, Super Eight? It's 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 depressing. Yeah, the I spent forty dollars a roll on the cartridges, got four. So and then and then when I sent it off to the lab, got it uh, developed, scanned, graded, and then uploaded to a drive that all ended up being $450 total. And then I spent all this yeah. money on the camera and I was like, fuck. Yeah, I can't do it. And there's, and there's no you audio on, su I there's no audios on Super 8s, right? It's just, no. yeah. So like to me, More. yeah, I'm sorry. I, I can't, I can't do that. That is, that is 450 could go to a new microphone for me or like, uh, or like gas or like groceries <laughs> or whatever. So it's, yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> After I learned about it, I was like, Carly, this is not a sustainable hobby. Like, what are you doing? And then someone messaged me on Instagram, actually, and she was like, yeah, this is why only filmmakers shoot, fit, like, on Super 8 now. It's because of the prices. And it made me think back to when I sent off, I filled out my form for the Super 8 um, at this, or to send off to this lab. And it said, what's the title of your movie? And like, as if it was like, I was making a project and I was like, oh my God, uh, this is so embarrassing. It's just like my summer memories. Well, at least you have it. At least you, you have that and yeah. you can keep it. At least, you know, you can say, I got to shoot on Super 8. I don't know if you ever will shoot on oh, again oh. for a while, but like, <laughs> who knows? I mean, but that's the thing. It's it's cool because my grandparents, when they got married, they had like, they had like the Super 8. So that was cute. And then they had like, I think a Frank Sinatra song or some shit over it. So it was like. It was tender. It I was love... tender as fuck. Don't get me wrong. I cried I for that it. shit. Oh, so. I want to see it. The, and that that is true. What you just said, like that trip for me was so special, and I'll remember it the rest of my life. I'm gonna like show my kids, my grandkids. Like, oh yeah. Look, your mom's really cool. <laughs> she did yeah. all this alone. <laughs> and that's and that's that's a whole other like thing, which is like I think it's great. It's that you're traveling, and I think. You know, I, I saw like you were doing your questionnaire on this. I didn't get to see all of them, but like I saw a few of them and I, there was a few topics you brought up. And I think it's important. It's like, you know, I think, you know, women should be able to travel and do all this stuff and not have this idea of being afraid because of fucking creeps out there. You know, Harvey Weinstein mm -hmm. or like fucking the Bill Cosby or like, you know, Kevin Spacey or any of these fucking awful people like um uh, Women. it's so it, it's disappointing it's yeah. like it 
but first when it happened, I was like, fuck that. I should be able to wear whatever I want and I should be able to go wherever I want and Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have to worry about this. And I had that attitude and what that did was get me in trouble. And I, cause I was like, I don't want limits and I don't want to have to be like, think that I need to like change how I act, uh, change how I dress, change where I go just because I'm a woman. And then what that did was I got myself into some scary situations on my road trip Mm -hmm. and I I mourned I truly I mourned like just the fact that like I don't have the same freedom as as men like it I had to like go through this period of being like really upset and just like accepting that and it's like you can't go about it with you this can't. fucking attitude you, got, you gotta you fight wanna, for it you know fight the power yeah like. exactly so I I learned like I learned over time like you have to be very I don't so I if you can tell I'm very like smiley and like giggly and like Mm -hmm. my usually my energetic boundaries are very open and like approachable and inviting and then when I'm out on my own now though like I really have to change that it's like more of like a stern face I always know where I'm going like air quote on that Mm -hmm. because I don't if I don't know where I'm going I just pretend like I do um I don't like entertain anyone trying to like like show me around or take me out Mm -hmm. because like if you give it's funny it's like even if you give a little smile like I've learned in the past it's like it's it's an invitation to some people that don't respect boundaries so it has been a learning curve for me um, a balance but... again a balance yes a fucking balance <laughs> <laughs> yes it's balance but once you and i don't mean to say that all of this to like freak people out like my my goal is to inspire or encourage other women to travel solo mm-hmm. but it's like once you learn those things it just becomes second nature and like it makes you realize like oh i can operate in this world just mm-hmm. in a more modified way but yeah. it's worth it to see the world and to be able to do things on your own and be independent to me it's all worth it yeah just know your surroundings and just you know just be smart and like mm-hmm. yeah it's just sad that like you know there's just creeps out and everything and it's like talking to one of my friends who live here and they're just saying like like you can go out at night or blah 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 in san francisco but i can't like in certain areas like in the marina everyone feels safe just because it's it's a marina like it's a it's where tourists come but if you go down to the mission or some places at night you know as a man you're probably okay you know still look around but like as a woman there's some sketchy areas where it's like you have to be careful someone you know might jump or whatever or some whatever anything can happen you know and it's anything it's just it's sad to hear that like some men are like that and like i i was gonna even say like another friend who came on here you know and we talked in the past uh like she was recently was telling me about like how sometimes she so she you know posts where she travels stuff but also loves posting her body go girl all for it you know you're beautiful 100 percent. but some people like creeps they're there just to see her body or they'll send her messages and she'll tell me how it's just disgusting and it's like i'm doing this for art and it's like yeah i see that because i i see the art and stuff like that and it's like i don't know how you handle that shit it's such a like paradox i totally understand where this person's coming yeah because like you have what like forty thousand, forty seven, like like you're fame you just need to get that verified check and then you're there at that point (laughs) Um, but like, have you ever had to deal with any, like, I'm assuming just oh. awful men or creeps or maybe creepy girls who the fuck knows? Maybe you're getting both out here. Shit. I don't think you followed me actually at this point. Um, one of my first huge Instagram breaks, because we all know I love Instagram breaks. I, I get so sick of the app sometimes. And that was used to be a really big thing for me. It was like, I was getting so many triggering objectifying sexualizing messages when i'm just like wearing a fucking bikini like Mm. i'm sorry that's not an invitation for you to to treat me with disrespect or like treat me like an object i but and to me it was so upsetting that i was getting that influx it kind of made me feel like i like didn't have control over how i went about my day because it's like yes i have control over how i can respond to those people but i'm human and it like will get to me and so I was having all these instances where I was like having a great day and then I'd get messages and then I'd be like, fuck, it just ruined like, I don't it. like this. It it's like, and I day. felt, 
it, yeah, and it, it, I felt like I didn't have control over how I get my that day so went. fucking much. Like, not like what's happening with you. Like, no one's like hitting me up for my skinny like twig body or Gumby <laughs> body. I'm not saying like that, but like I'm saying like you're having a good day, and then like someone sends you a message that just kind of like ruins it, or they say something, and it's just like fuck. But continue, not to and take away what you're saying. That's the case with everyone though on social media. It's like you don't have control over the interactions that you get and and sometimes it can feel so my biggest thing in life is like feeling like I have like the freedom and and like it just makes me want to rebel when I feel like I don't have control over that like uh, how my day goes the places that I can see that's why I was so rebellious with like all that shit when I was Mm -hmm. traveling alone and yeah so that was a huge thing for me was like I didn't, it made me feel caged. It was like not have, being able to um, control like my my interactions throughout the day. So yeah, I've definitely had to deal with that. And the, the best thing to do, especially for the ones that are like very disruptive, mm-hmm. is just block. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's yeah. like, that's where I've gone about it. And I, and and in the end of the day, actually, it's like, I, the more I have worked through that, and the more I realize, like, I do have, like, sovereignty over, like, how my day goes, and I, like, practice emotional regulation, I've done a lot of work to do that, like, I'm, I'm less and less phased by it. No, and I think that's a good thing, I think that's, like, a good thing to realize, because they're just trolls, at the end of the day, they just, exactly. they just behind, behind some device, and just say whatever they think they say, like, they could never say it's that powerful. in person. And if they did, I hope you fucking hit them pretty hard, you know, um, yes. because like they need to learn manners and stuff and be a gentleman or a, a appropriate. I don't know. It goes both ways. I think there could definitely be some goes both ways for sex or whatever. Anyways, the point is, is yeah. like, be careful and like uh, still, but still be yourself and still post whatever makes you happy. That's, that is the, majority or the main focus because you should not hide yourself because you have weirdos and stuff and i think it's good that you said you even take a break from social media because like i definitely did when that like i don't know if you have netflix but it was the show i forget what it's called now but like some people from like instagram or whatever they talked about how it's all fucked up or whatever and like how or facebook or whatever and it's like like they just i know you, what you're talking you know about. i think it's called the social dilemma i never saw it maybe that's what is it a social dilemma maybe i don't know yes yes i never saw it but i heard about it it's like scary because like the last part at the end they say like the people who work there whatever like the high executives they don't let their kids use instagram Wow. which like i like stopped i like i turned off all notifications or whatever so i only come on that's... like 15 minutes and then go off but then when film mm-hmm. came around i was just like oh fuck this we're just adding all the films seeing what's going on and it's like it's it's mind sucking it just like sucks you in and it's like i just sit on there it's like worse like i'm not on tiktok thank god i don't use it i mean i do have it but i don't really use it but like that you could be on there for hours fuck oh my god it is so addicting it's crazy okay but i will say this tiktok i learn things at rapid speeds i love to learn oh yeah and sometimes i can just like i feel like i've I've uh, I've just downloaded all this information in the matter of two hours, but it's scary how addicting that can go on, especially when the videos are three minutes or so. Mm. I think that's like the max that it can be. Yeah, and it's like I get the learning thing because like I like at least like watching like Insta reels on like cooking. So like I'll watch like how to make a new cooking food or whatever. I'm like, oh yeah, adding it to the recipe. But continue. I do the same. Yeah. It's... But the thing with it, just going back to Instagram versus TikTok, mm-hmm. I think that what can get so so soul sucking about Instagram is that like with TikTok you can like see people's personalities and it has like more of like a human quality. If you're just going on, uh, you're scrolling, or going tap 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 through stories, you kind of just I, I don't know what you lose that that human element. The the mind wants to go next 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 mm-hmm. so quickly. Um, the attention it's built yeah i was literally love how you set me up like join in lebron you gave me the assist here <laughs> love it uh, because like yeah the attention span is like a huge thing like 
look at music like for people who like if you've listened to this and you're a musician i appreciate you like you like listen to all this but like we'll bring some music ideas in here like songs in the 60s used to be like five minutes six minutes that may be 10 or whatever you're looking if you're looking at jazz or if you're looking at like rock and they had guitar solos like today you know music's like what 230 maybe Yes. 150. That's like new too. I've been noticing that a lot lately. Yeah. I'm like, I, I thought before, maybe like a few years ago, I thought it was 330 average. Mm-hmm. But now it's now shorter. I keep it too. It's mm-hmm. just like, cause they like people's attention span. They want like that. If you're into whatever music, like they want like that rise and then it just hits boom. And then you're like your dopamine. Like they just want the song to happen. And it's like, like, I don't know, like at first, I could understand that because I just I just want to make the song happen, you know, just like get there. But then as I realized and stuff like songs are supposed to be like a storytelling, you know, like look at like some old folk music like Bob Dylan, if you want or whatever, or uh, Nilly Wilson, you know, um, yeah, like you're, you you should listen to what the story is telling you no matter how long it is, especially the album. Don't fucking album jump. Fucking listen to that album. From one to ten, listening. not shuffle, you know. So that's why yeah. vinyl I love because you can't. I mean, you could move the pin, but why do that? Just listen to the whole thing. And basically, it's just not to get off topic, but like music, like it's important to appreciate and listen to the whole story and not let your mind wanting to race to the end. Because like, there's a song by Eric Clapton called "Cocaine," and uh, I tell this. I think I said this this joke so many or story so many times showed it to my sister she's like younger than me she's like a freshman in college now and like i just remember she was like when does the bass drop and i was like there is no bass drop what the fuck are you talking about like this is just pure <laughs> solo clear playing there's no rise there's no drop there's you're just appreciating him just shredding or just playing the guitar and it's like and i think attention spans it's like especially today i feel like my younger siblings even me and maybe some people who i know a little bit older it's like we want things to happen now. We want it to just to happen instead of, you know, climbing up the hill and like, you know, getting there, you know, over time, you know, and appreciate yes. this hard work. And yes. I'm I'm guilty as fuck for it because I'm definitely I know like oh. go ahead. Same. Yeah, you you, yeah. you you get it. Like I've just been having this like this thought. As for some reason everything we're talking about are things that just keep like slapping me in the face lately. Uh, we're on we're in sync yeah but... you're like you're like what, what's the term it's like uh uh twin flame you're literally like a twin flame you're like sister out here shit man <laughs> I love it. I, it's been this way since the very beginning every 100%. time you'd say something and i'd be like yes or i'd post a song and you'd be like that's from this and i'm like wait i love that movie mm-hmm. lo- yeah no it's we've been ping-ponging 100 <laughs> percent. but continue what you're but... saying about the attention span I, that this is what i was talking to my mom recently about and i was like it's been two weeks here and i'm still not in a routine my sleep's not good i'm not like i don't know how to segment my days so that i'm productive and she's like that's the girl she's like harley you've been there for two weeks this is one of the biggest changes of your life like it's a huge transition she's like what made you think that you were going to be able to do all of this in two weeks? She's like, it's your generation. It's, it's your attention span. You guys think that you like things just happen so quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's honestly something that I really liked about Europe. The way that it's set up here is like, everything is slower. Mm. I listened to one of your podcasts and you guys were talking about, um, how the the film takes, like you can get filmed by the end of the day or something. Oh yeah. With the time day. Yeah. Continue. I went to, yes. I went to a lab here and he's like, he's, I literally, I had filled out the form. He's wrapping it up and he's like, okay, it's going to be two and a half weeks. And I'm like, what? Like just being from America, it's like, you just don't, you don't operate on that. Everything's very like fast and efficient. So that was one thing that made me slow down here. Uh, the the laundry, it sounds silly that these are such small things, but these are really things that have been like helping me rewire my brain. Mm-hmm. My laundry takes a day and a half to dry. So I just, everything is slower here. And mm-hmm. when I have conversations with people here, I always would say when I was young, when I was young and, or like, oh, I haven't, I don't have this figured out yet. And they are so appalled and they're like, you are very young. You have so much life ahead of you. And I think in, in America, it's just this different like mindset of like, 
you have to get everything figured out before you're 30 or else you're a fucking failure. Yeah, like <laughs> it, exactly. That that mindset. But you know, but oh my god, you just opened so many doors now. Like I don't know how I got here. I, no, 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 but I love it. I love it. We're gonna go to that. Just <laughs> side note, it, like I get that failure thing, like with, with music, like you know, you feel like you have to see these younger people just making it at this such a younger age, but it's like for people, remember this. It took Bill Wither Withers the age 40 to get huge. It took Quincy Jones the age 50 or 55 to get his first hit record. So like, it, you know, it's a process just putting that out yes. there. But to say what you're saying, yes, like, you know, film like Bill's cameras. Can't believe I'm bringing them up in this again. Shout out to them. Br- drop it off at 8 a.m. I would get it back at 3 p.m. And I was so used to it. And then some of these stores in SF or, or I usually go to Sacramento to do it. It's a little bit cheaper. Um, it would take like two or three days or whatever, but still two weeks. Holy shit. But I love the slow pace because I was in uh, San, uh, is it San Pros? What is it? It's like where, you know, who Bridget Bardot. Yeah. She lived in, is it San Tropez? Is that how you say it? San Tropez, yeah. Yeah. So was there, I've th- never been so went there three years ago and. That was very slow. And I liked like the people, the, how the lives they lived there and like another place. If it wasn't New Zealand, it would be there. We would move and live there yes. because like the people are great. And this summer, I think I'm trying to go back there like with a few friends or whatever and just like shoot some film, walk around. I'm going to crash. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally going to bring my microphone, try to get Bridget Bardot on the podcast, even though, you know, maybe bring that like painting or whatever photo of her and like you know get her to sign it who who knows but uh oh, yeah it's uh I, love her, my idol. She, I don't even think you followed me at that point either but no. i had post see we have so many synchronicities it's crazy i i posted her like back in 2020 and i was like talking about like how like i love she's like my biggest inspo and like oh, i save yeah. all her photos and my pinterest and she's stuff. amazing like you know like you know she yeah. was a huge like icon you know of course a yeah she's beautiful but b like she animal rights like that was the when i heard about that like i that's when i like was like oh my god she's amazing then i saw what she looked like i was like wow pretty girl for sure but like you know but you know but she was the same she was like she didn't even want to like show off her body because she was so shy she just wanted to help animals and stuff and like you know but you know she needed to make a living so she knew i'll do this but like it's just great that now she spends all that time to help animals, you know, you know, fight for them and like, you know, make sure we don't stop eating them and shit. So like, yeah, man, it's, it's amazing. I didn't even know that about her. I like, I truly was only like uh, inspired by the photos that I saw. I didn't know any backstory. So that's okay, really yeah. cool. Yeah. She's an activist, animal activist, really, really into it. Like always willing she, to help the animals. And so. she lives in San Tropez. Well, she has, she has one house there. She also has, a, I think a house in Paris. So she goes back to back and forth, yeah. but like, yeah, you know, it's uh it's cool that she's there and like trying to go back this summer. I gotta figure yes. it out and everything. But the same vibe to go back to what you were talking about with like that that slow beach town, mm-hmm. same exact thing in Italy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it, it I had been running on like a high when I had last year was really tough for me. Like I was I was just like focusing a lot on like my healing and just like sorting through a lot of depression and anxiety. And I, when I got to Europe, it was almost as if I had to like come down from being so addicted to my own stress, you know, Mm -hmm. and just being here, simply being here with a different lifestyle and these different, like this different mindset and approach to life just helped me like calm my nervous system down. Uh, And this is, it's so funny. This was such a minuscule little event on my trip but I'm about I'm paying for gelato in Italy right and I'm dropping everything like my credit cards are flying my euros are like coins are dropping everywhere and I'm like I'm so sorry I'm so sorry like like being very frantic and like Mm -hmm. uh, like crazy and they're like she's like it's okay take your time we have so much time and she goes life's already stressful enough like you can take as long as you want and I was like after that I was like oh my god I don't know it, it I was I I was operating at such a mm-hmm. high pace uh high pace high stress 
functioning throughout life and you don't even recognize it until you see that mm -hmm. mirror in front of you in them being like it's okay and it was exactly what I needed in that moment and I swear that tiny little interaction made me go about my life differently oh yeah I I, I get that for sure I think I think in America you know it's just like we try to move make deals you know fast 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 and you know efficiency oh yeah and like you talk about like depression and like anxiety for sure a hundred here again jesus christ feeling it for sure and it's like you know especially like you know you wear this like we feel like on social media show this happiness and like positivity but like you know when you're not on camera you're this you're, you people don't really know who you are you know until they really get to know you and it's like look at robin williams like not saying we're that there but like happiest dude mm -hmm. but he was very depressed like no one i don't think I knew it's crazy i saw a photo it's like this is um i was like on my explore page or something like this is what depression looks like and it was like all these really happy faces anthony bourdain um Philip oh Seymour my Hoffman, god uh, anthony bourdain don't even stop i love that i saw I, his shut the fuck up don't even fucking go I there was gutted. you saw I, the documentary oh, I don't even... no oh 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 fuck okay well, my mom told me about this it's it's so good i like like understand i'm really i'm trying to get a tattoo of him to put it right here like i like I this like I fully support like this. he's like us like like you they show like clips of him talking even like even off camera just stuff like they're saying and just like oh my god like i connect to him on a higher level than ever and like he likes one of the same songs that i like from a band from san francisco they're called the brian jones massacre and like it's a depressing song and i but i love it because i love the lyrics and the sound and i'm like oh my god i'm like anthony bourdain fuck me jesus christ i love that you know what i think it is just even that comment you made about the depressing song it's like he's not afraid of darkness and like uh, exploring a lot of different like human yeah. darkness and i think that's really something that like we all crave because we hide behind these masks i it's like, yes go preach sister. Yes. preach you're going off <laughs> it's so and this is something that I kind of like I realized this past year when I worked a lot on myself and like in making friends with my past I used to try and this was something you could see like reflected on my Instagram I used to try to like pretend like I was this happy person 24 7 and I even literally believed it like I started believing my own lie and that's what like led to this demise of me like breaking mm. and just being like whoa you don't I couldn't, until I accepted my darkness, like so much, um, I couldn't accept myself and I didn't know mm. myself because I didn't accept all parts of myself. And now I like, like my darkness. I like oh, fucking yeah. love my emotions. And like, mm -hmm. I'm a very emotional person and I don't show it to like many people. I think like my mom and my sister have seen like my like dark days. Mm -hmm. But like, I genuinely, that's when I'm the most introspective. I'm the most creative. And it's almost, it's honestly what made me fall in love with film because I would get so fucking in my feels. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I need to put this somewhere because I can't just sit with this. Oh, yeah. And channeled it through like what I was seeing. Like even just like you, it's funny, like the little things that would connect with me and like just like a little light, like shining through like a dark on a, on a really like dark corner mm -hmm. of a room and I was like and it captured exactly what I was feeling oh, in that yeah. moment and that's what made me hooked it wasn't there's a lot of other things but I'd say it's like the emotion part of film that really got to me because it's like especially if you're an overthinker mm -hmm. I'm sorry uh, I'm rambling I, I, no, so no, no, much. No, no, no 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 keep going because like this is like I told you this is the stuff I want to talk about like I every, okay, everything good. you're saying I feel to so continue for sure good good if you're an overthinker, this is what I think about a lot about film. If you're an overthinker and you're in your head a lot, mm -hmm. there's something so grounding about just like being there. It has, you have to be present for it in order to one, use the camera. Two, you don't want to waste your expensive film. So you just like, you, it has yeah. to be good. So you ha you're just, and then it also makes you be really aware of your surroundings. I notice so much more and I'm, because I'm so much more present with my camera that like it, it's such it's so therapeutic for overthinkers it like puts you right into that moment and like it just forces you to be so present a hundred percent everything fuck there's so many i'm trying to keep all my points here because i want to hit every <laughs> single one with you right now because there's so many so like 
Go, this uh, is the problem with ADD. Yeah, I know, too. but like, like, but like, I like how we're like the energy's there. We're on the same wavelength, so it's great. That's weird. So the film, I'll save quickly because the other stuff I'll forget. So film, that's why now I like my dad even tells me like one shot a day or like two shots a day of like wherever you are. And like, you don't have to take a, uh, the same picture of the goddamn Golden Gate Bridge every fucking evening or morning. And it's like, oh. fair enough, fair enough. Or, um, do you ever forget though? Sometimes, like, I'll forget. Yeah, I bet, like, like the Eiffel Tower, Tower or something. Tower. Yeah. So I'm more like, you know, I guess conservative on the shots. Like, I'm more like, I want to get, like, and also I have a 28 millimeter. So I have to, like, really think about, like, it's going to be wide. So I'll need to. Eat, if I want a shot, I got to get really fucking close to them or I got to like <laughs> angle it in a certain way. So I'm more, you know, creative, like you said, uh, about that with the film. But then going back to the spiritual thing, um, which I'm so happy right now. And then like I have my like a Ganesh like little like, like the little God here. He's like loving this shit. It's like the whole deal. Like yes. um, there's a book that I read in 2021, I think, or 2020 or just 2020. Uh it's called the power of now and like like that book <laughs> that book like we talk about like ego and we talk about like this like feelings and stuff that like we were irrational like we have to we just get all whatever and like when he was talking about like his panic attack and stuff in the intro and stuff and just how he like it, it was like an awakening and how he how he dealt with it and everything and like he talks about other stuff if you read the book um it's... I've read A New Earth, um, and I think there's some overlap, mm. but I've never read The Power of Now. I love him. That that A New Earth is what like brought oh. me into my spiritual path. It was it changed my life. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, I I could tell you were spiritual. I knew the vibe. Like I'll I'll mail you the book or whatever because I have it. I, I've yes. been giving it to people, and like that also got me into, into Alan Watts, who's like a philosopher who I'm like really into, and um. But with the power now, like it made me realize, like to take a step back, and it's hard, especially with ADD. Like you, you overthink, and there's certain oh. things, and you, you you try to be your best, and that's all it is. And you don't mean to overthink or or make things complicated. Like I'm, I'm not trying to make things complicated. I'm just trying to focus. And I'm, but like sometimes our brains just make us go there, and it's sometimes you got, like you said, like taking a slow, like. I just take a step back or like, you know, go for a walk or if I'm driving, I'm overthinking, just pull yes. over and just take a deep breath yeah. and just like, look what's around you. Look at yes. your present day. Think about what you've done. Think of the people who are in your life at this moment and the people who care and love and appreciate you and like realize everything's going to be okay. And it's like what Paul McCartney said and let it be like the songs about like, you know, his mother coming to him saying, it's okay. It's going to be fine. Just that like, calming voice of a mother you know and and i and i feel that too because like when i stress out i think of my mom and like she's not dead folks she's alive doing great you know th thriving uh i'm just i'm just saying like sh when i was little and stuff or if i got anxious or like you know i didn't feel good or whatever sick i just remember she would just always come to me and just like you know pet my head or whatever you know and just tell me it's gonna be okay and just her soothing voice it's just very calming like an ocean wave and it's like it's like shit You're man you know what i mean like moms are, moms are great my mom is this like the same exact like mm -hmm. there's something so powerful i've done this same exact vis visualization when i was feeling upset about something mm -hmm. and i was really working through a hard time and I would like thought of her just like like holding like little me and I was and it, it seriously brought me down brought my heart rate down my, my when I was staying with her um last year mm -hmm. I like had a really rough day and I just like broke down one day and like literally just her like petting my arm and like telling me it was going to be okay I don't know what it is it's like a superpower it's mom's <laughs> literally you are lining up things I like there's so much to talk about because like there was like okay I want to go back to the darkness too you know try to loop yes. that in but there's a show that came out called Midnight Gospel I don't know if you heard of it it's like an animated show mm -hmm. uh this guy named Duncan Trussell amazing like he's like a comedian and he has his own podcast and he's into music too he has synthesizers and stuff the show's cartoon but he takes his podcast and they turn it into cartoons and they talk and like one of the episodes is with his mom and like they're very spiritual and like i literally i have 
copy the transcript here to read just because I want it because I knew I didn't know if we would get to this, but like we're here now. So like she says, like meditation is a preparation for death. Uh, meditation is one spiritual practice that prepares us for death. Uh, if you look at the world, what you see is things appearing and disappearing and humans are a part of that, uh, of a whole of that. Humans ap appear and they disappear off the face of the earth. That's just happened. You know, our egos, personalities, uh, they all just vanish um, and you have to accept it. Uh, it's a, it's change of form, you know, transfigures. Your, so like basically him and his mother are talking and like, like at this time, like she, she passed away in the podcast. She had cancer, I think. And she, mm -hmm. but like they took his podcast that he had with her and like looking back on it and like they knew like she wasn't going to be here for a minute and like, but they talked about this and he just says like, no, I know there's, I know, but come on, uh, there's no way to stop a heartbreak. How do you, how do you stop a heartbreak? And she just says, you cry. You just let that darkness and just emotion come out and you like, you can't stop that. And it's so, so true. And you like, and here's, here's the full, full circle with the darkness. Like you have to, yes. you have to embrace it and like, like death and everything about that. It's just, it's just a reality, you know, and it, it doesn't go anywhere either. It's mm. like, I was under the impression until I started like this big awakening when I was really trying to work on myself, which was like 20, I had just turned 28 like mm -hmm. a year, like a year and a half, a year ago okay. is when I really was like there, you can't hide anymore from it. Mm -hmm. It's like, it made me realize that all that emotion over the, my entire past that I'd ever stuffed down inside of me, like what I thought that was doing was making it all go away. And maybe it like, it was dormant. Um, but it affected me in so many ways that I wasn't even realizing, but like it, when I started processing it all, it was like, holy shit that goes nowhere that's always there inside of you and until you learn to embrace it you're going to shame it and when you shame it you're going to shame yourself and that's going to affect how you show up in every single thing you do your work your relationships mm -hmm. everything and you so you, it's like in order to in order to function as like a normal human being in society that's how i re what i re for me personally it was like i don't i don't couldn't show up as like my best self until i was able to accept my past accept my darkness like and like show up at like who i am in, in uh, my all of my authenticity because before it was just like such a mask and i felt like i was drowning no i get, and i was yeah. like continue yeah. yeah i feel it everything you said it's it's you have to again balance you know like yes it's, it's balance you know have your happy and you know what but, but you're sad i'm sorry to go ahead go ahead go go for it <laughs> you know what's cool about darkness this is what i learned throughout all of it mm -hmm. you uh, it, everything is is there's duality to everything like i feel like my uh, the spectrum of my emotions has gotten so much grander and like I can experience joy on such a crazy level now that I've I've embraced my darkness and I sat with that shit that like mm. gross feeling of like shame and like self-loathing and like really deep depression like what that did and I and I think that if people knew this maybe it would like help them and like embrace that side of them it, what that does is it opens up like such great heights for experiencing like really beautiful emotions that like I don't know they're my favorite memories it's is it, I don't shame the darkness anymore because it's allowed to bring in so much light so I yeah. now I'm like grateful for the darkness like mm -hmm. I can even like look back on the times and be like fuck yeah that's what made me that's who made that's what made me who I am and I'm so grateful for it yeah I it's it's an interesting thing because like darkness is like you should you shouldn't run away or be against it you should embrace it like you're saying because like happy dude here but like all my songs even if you listen to them or whatever like like plugging spotify folks or whatever streaming service you use i want to uh, you'll send it to me for you. sure it's they're dark though like 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 or at least like the artists who see who i work with they 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 write some like dark stuff yeah some of them are whatever their relationships but then some i'm trying to do more than just relationship more like mental and spiritual of course and like i just I don't know. I feel it. And it's a way to like embrace and breathe. And it's like your darkness is your friend. You can't like, yeah. 
like just like right now because like i don't know i'm like fully present i'm like calm feeling good the light's shining i'm feeling good and just thinking like like how like darkness like we are so afraid of it and i think like the biggest darkness like for me like recently or a year ago it's like i was like i don't know like was in a relationship groovy grant whatever we're doing our thing but like it wasn't it but like i like got so sucked into it like i forgot the music and like i had clients and i was working with some colleagues of mine and i didn't fulfill what i was supposed to do and then i kind of like for you know wasn't coming to meetings abandoning them you know staying at her place you know just lounging whatever it was good but like also it was not good it was i was there was no balance to the point where like it just ended and like I lost the friends because I fucked up and uh, and there was other things and I just I sat with that and I stopped making music like this previous summer and stuff and like really was like shell-shocked or like you know just lost my confidence or whatever and I don't know it was like a big big thing but then like you said after just like not trying to avoid it and like not think about it I realized I just need to embrace it and once yeah. I embraced it and just like got over that barrier and just realized like I fucked up, I know what I did here, but you can't run from it. It's going to be a part yeah. of you. And yeah, maybe, maybe, you know, you lost those friendships and maybe you hope someday they can reconnect or whatever, but that's all you can do. But until then you still got to keep pushing and like you yes. accept what you did and you got to keep moving. And it's like, it's hard. It's hard. Like there's a lot of dark stuff. Like there's that or like, when you or like confidence wise like you think whatever this or like they're not gonna like my my work i have here and it's like you gotta they're just not gonna accept me if they know yeah you gotta believe mm-hmm. in yourself you gotta like you not mm-hmm. have to worry that inner thought in our head man it's just it just tries to yap and yap and just bug us and it's like no i'm not gonna let that you gotta still it's hard i'm not saying it's easy by it's... any means but you got to do go in and out too. 100%. Like I go in and out of being a witness to my thoughts and then being so fucking negative talk spiral and not even realizing how big of a bitch is in my head mm, yeah. <laughs> like for weeks to it months, it could even happen. And then I can go into these phases where I'm like very separated and be like, whoa, that's not true. What you're telling yourself. Like, yeah. it, but it's hard work. It's really hard. And there's, there's, I remember in college, like, there was times where like I even called my mom and she didn't really like she's like you know her answer was like at the time like just do exercise and don't get me wrong working out or whatever running is helpful but that wasn't it like I just remember there was times where I was in a good mood but all of a sudden like a switch was like I just felt gloomy like I was just fucking sad and like the answer was like yeah I can understand like working out was like it was good because like it made me tired and whatever but that didn't help the gloominess because it still came back here and there and it was just like I think there was like And I realized today what the problem was. It was like less self-love for me. I didn't have that self-love and I'm still working on it still today. And like, that's what I'm trying to work on and like focus on Grant for once and know like the dating and all that stuff because that's that. That's a, that's a mind fuck. That's too much. I can't. Yeah. Go ahead. That's a whole nother thing. Like what I learned was. And I kept getting sucked back. Like last year, I just said, I was just talking about this, but I was like saying how this year I really want to prioritize myself. That's what I said I wanted to do last year. And I just kept getting sucked back into it. Someone that's like, if you've dated a lot, like I was in a really long term relationship and then I jumped like right into dating right afterwards. Um, And I would try to stay away and I get sucked back in. And what I, what really made me stop was realizing just how much. I would, I would progress on my like healing journey. And then like, I would get sucked back into these really dark places. Because if you're not feeling good mentally, you're going to attract that same vibration with like a lot of people in the outward world. So it's like, no, yeah, that's when I was like, fuck it. Solitude is really good for you right now. (laughs) It is. And like, that's like what I'm really realizing, because like, at least for me, like I realized, you know, you go on these dates and you think it's going to be different, but really it's, it, for me, it's just been all the same, how, how everything ends, how it goes. It's just like, it's just the same occurrence. And then I think just because how many times has it happened and like, you know, like we're just jumping to dates, the dates, the dates, because like I'm in San Francisco and it's like, you know, it's you, such you're a, like you, disposable world. Yeah. Nowadays. Well, people just love bell bottoms, man. I don't know what to say. Me with bell bottoms, <laughs> I just thrive. I don't know what to say out here. <laughs> 
it's just <laughs> i don't know there's groovy gals out here that's that's what it is so but it's like <laughs> we'll be also because like berkeley's like a you know over the bridge for me so it's exactly. like so i it works out pretty well for me that's all i'm gonna say but the, but like Ruby Grant, i love that so we're much. we're doing it but like it's like at the same time it's like it's not what i need right now because a like i'm in like grad school to talk about grants first like i'm in grad school right now for audio engineering and it's like this is my nice. my like one year to you know make the connections you know these connections are gonna help me get the job college yeah it was great but i didn't really learn anything if you ask me what i learned maybe i learned something about dinosaurs and clouds because i took two courses on that but like fuck man i don't know what else i learned sorry mom or dad if you hear that shit like i don't know man it didn't really turn out how you guys thought it was was gonna be it's just have a degree now so this is I'm a photographer like i haven't i haven't done anything with what i learned yeah like i didn't go to school for photography it, i did go to school for psych though and i feel like you can tell i'm very like psych oriented. well that's good i mean like that i mean you can understand like i'm trying to figure all that shit out and because like yeah like when my you know it was the, like an art and entertainment degree but like kind of using it but not fully what i want to do so like this is the year where you know i have to like kind of buckle down and like really focus on myself really focus like making these connections go into the studio be the first one there be the last one out you know and like just work hard and show that i'm here to win i'm not here just to talk and it's like and like going on dates should not be a priority right now and it's like yeah like don't get me wrong zap your mental like without you even wanting it to you know it's like sometimes it's hard to like keep boundaries with that and it really can like seep into your brain it's hard it's hard and i think what's hard about it is that like like, you know, like you, you you see someone on the street or whatever and like they're pretty or we, we look at appearances, but we don't know what's behind that like appearance. Like what they're like, like everyone has trauma. I'm just going to say it. no one's perfect. So yeah. you don't know what you're yeah. about to uh, enter. And it's like, and you, take on. Yeah. Mm-hmm, and it's like a hundred percent. And, it's, and it's I a hundred, I agree exactly with what you're saying is that like, it, everyone has it and it's gonna it's an inevitable part about being in a relationship but it's like if you don't have the the boundaries or the strength within you to deal with it um in your own like self tools mm-hmm. then it, it's just gonna lead more to a demise yeah i i figured what i've learned from this uphill battle of dating was that if you're not ready you will either one attract people that are that are on that same level as you of being like emotionally unavailable, unhealed or mm-hmm. whatnot. Or you, maybe you do encounter really great people, but you're going to do them a disservice. Like, yeah. I, like no one talks about that. Like to mm-hmm. hurt a good person is like almost more painful than being hurt by an unhealed person. Like that's, and that's what fucked me oh, up. I, the past oh, I feel the past. that. It I was think... like hurting the good people that were actually ready for a relationship. Like that's what made my self-worth and self-esteem sink so low. Oh, was after 100%. That happened. I feel that they just, <laughs> I feel like they kind of fucked me up now. Now I'm in this like, whatever. I'm like, God damn it. And it's like, but, I know. but that's the thing. That's what I realized. Cause like, I realized I got some shit I got to figure out. And like, yeah. also just like dating it's like i got to the point where now it's just like i'm comfortable with myself like like that's the thing like i am fine sitting here making music my bed is literally right here or just watching seinfeld or facetiming like my friends or like yeah yes. you or my mom or whatever like i or practice my guitars or go out like i am totally content with myself and like that is that is the first step that i realized that like i'm I'm happy and I I still want that. And like, I don't know. I feel like you're you're not to say you're giving yourself, I I guess maybe you are giving yourself a little bit to a person and that's not a bad thing, but like, like you said, you gotta be ready when you know. And I think if you're second guessing just a little bit, then you know, you're not there yet. And it's like, I don't think I want to give up time for myself because like, also you you don't want to like, like you gotta be okay getting hurt. If you're not okay with that, then you're not ready yet. You gotta realize that shit doesn't work out always, and you have to understand that's okay. We just keep on moving. We're still. It doesn't mean we can't be ourselves still. So there's nothing wrong with you. It's just you and that person's wavelengths aren't there. You're you're grooving on a different wave on a different carpet, man. So it's chilling. Yes. It's chilling. Yes. You can't you can't fret. 
Yes, God, it's I've, there's so much truth, so many nuggets there that you were just saying. And it's so true what you were saying about relationships is like, you just have to, you have to be in this place where you're, you have to accept that you don't have any control over the other person and you, you're, you very well could get hurt. It's like a 50, 50 chance. Mm -hmm. And if you're not okay with that, like I'm currently not okay with that. I'm like so protective of my peace right now that I'm not okay with that. And I just want to protect it at all costs. So, but that is such a big part of dating is like, you just have to embrace the unknown and, mm -hmm. and like, just be ready for that. I don't, I don't think you have to be healed to be dating. I think that yeah. like a lot of healing comes from relationships. I think so too. But yeah. I think so. I, I didn't mean it like that. I think, but yeah, I think, I think the other person can show you stuff. It can open your mind for sure. There are, they're a mirror yes like yeah like they like some things i can heal on my own like reading journaling and but then there's some things that only happen when you are triggered by someone else or you see something in someone else and you're like whoa i really don't like that about that person and then you're like and then you realize you're like wait i don't like that in me i literally <laughs> i'm pulling up a quote that literally alan watts said uh, wow this is best podcast ever folks if you're still ever. here like he he said something about oh god if i could find it i mean yeah so he said so he took like like literally what we're talking about like he took something about like strings and he's like you know a single string yet pulled in opposite directions if there's too little tension or if there's too much so that the string breaks it will give forth no sound the perf the perfection of love is like the perfect tuning of the string that and i was like oh my god for love attains fulfillment as there is the maximum of union between two beings who remain uh definitely separated unity uh duality the law of sin by watts and i was like that is so true like the string like you know the perfect tuning that 440 man like um yes. and it's like that's like that's like take so we have let's take that analogy so like you have like whatever a guitar string one guitar string or whatever and it's like you're meeting that person that that person is now your tuner and it's like you're thinking about it, like it's gonna take some time until you get that perfect tune that perfect harmony or that perfect i guess note sound uh to play well and it's uh I think about that a lot and it's like you know if you're if you're not ready for that new tuner to come in to string you up it's uh then you know work on yourself and i think like and i think that's the biggest thing um which i'm realizing is that you could still not like you know be fully whatever there's you're always gonna have shit going on with you but like once you get to that point where it's like i'm okay to know that it's a 50 50 then i think then you're ready i think that is the biggest mindset or exactly. understanding exactly i have taken so long to get to this point that i don't know if you feel this way where i feel like i am my best friend and i like the person that lives upstairs in here mm -hmm. like i've it took me so long to get to this point where I, that's where i'm kind of at where i'm like whoa it took oh, yeah. so long so now i don't want to give that up mm -hmm. and i have been very self-sacrificing in relationships before where like i and i and so I really resonated with, with what you were saying earlier. And I think that you could relate to this, like, because I've been like that, it's almost made me be like hyper independent where I'm like, because I'm, I, I don't trust myself yet. Mm -hmm. And I think that maybe when that, when I, when I experience, I live out this, this maybe year, who knows, like, I don't yeah, know how long no, it's it, going to take it, me. That's the thing. Of, like, it's, it's a journey. And, it's a journey. Yeah. It's a journey. You can't, I'm going to go off the feeling exactly and like when you're ready you'll know when you're ready the time is right and yeah. like that's what i realized and like everything you're saying i feel that because like like the sac you know sacrificing like i you know other relationships you know just talking about like how i would you know fly back to san francisco because i you know i went to school in tucson and um you know i was dating someone from you know who went to usf and like you know going back and forth yeah it was like it yeah and it was but like like it was just like it was good but then at the same time it was just i realized like this is too much and also like this person i think you know i she probably won't listen to this i'm gonna be honest but like if she did but what, <laughs> what, 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 what who gets at this point what, what there is a connection i am not losing this wavelength we're gonna keep it going <laughs> no sacrificing Don't for these exes is that like she got a little clingy like i would talk to her on facetime or whatever or throughout the day and then i would stop and then my friends were like we're gonna watch rick and morty 
and do you want to watch and like we got pizza and i was like heck yeah i want to watch rick and morty and like in but then like i'm watching or whatever and i you know at the time when i had snapchat or whatever like like post whatever a funny clip and she's like so you decide to watch rick and morty and not go back talking to me and i was like whoa whoa oh, chill the fuck out you gotta understand i gotta have free space you can't like drown me jesus christ and like clingy is the That's word here long distance like it's just really freaking hard one if there's trust issues like that or like mm-hmm. like a lack of like boundaries with who can have independence and who can't yeah but then the fact of like it does something to your mental of always Uh, and that's great for you that you like still wanted to be with your friends and you're still like living in the moment I remember like when I was in my long distance relationship it was like I was stuck in this feeling of never wanting to be where I was in that present moment Mm. and it was like it was rough for me like it was I I felt like I was had two really depressing years Mm. during that where I was like I never could enjoy the present moment because I always like wished I was somewhere else with someone else that's that's real like shit yeah you you know like I know that yeah it it is a soul-sucking experience long distance I don't know if I would recommend it even for like the healthiest relationships just because I value presence so much like I think that's but that's a love language that that's a love language that really matters I didn't realize that is what you're saying is like love language so you gotta you gotta talk about that like like people like some not to cut you off so sorry i didn't mean like no uh, no i love this it's like like i realized like when i if back in the not back in the day, last date or whatever like whatever you want to say you know you, you do your small talk but I, like i'll bring up you know what's your love language your zodiac whatever you know the, the, that all that right. shit whatever you want to call it but like i at least the love language i think is real because you need to understand what type of person this is. And like, you know, I think, I think affirmation or whatever it is, like, you know, letting them know that you're there, like, even though you're busy, like, you could be busy, but as long as you let me know, like, we're good. I'm chilling. It's like, language matters. So true. And love language. I love that you say that too, because my experience with it is, and this, it like, it, shaped what I want in my next relationship like it's I hope that I find someone with the same love language as me because you can do it where you don't match up and you have different love languages but it makes it that much harder you always have to be like cognizant of how to show affection and make that person feel supported and loved and but if, when it's the same it just like flows and it's so easy it's so good man and it's like yeah that's like what I like I'm not going to say that's an ultimatum or that's a deal breaker, but it's a little bit, it's a deal breaker. I feel like at least for me, just cause like I, it is no, because I want, so I want it to flow, you know, I want the river to be chill mm-hmm. and be good. And I want it to like, I don't like, listen, I'm not going to say I won't handle complications if it gets like, but like no one wants it, things to get complicated, but let's be real relationships. They get complicated. Shit happens. I see my folks, shit happens a lot. And you know, sometimes where it gets really bad, but, like, but at the end of the day, they, you know, I think that's the other thing, relationships, you got to be mature, like they come back and they they talk it out and they realize it. And, you know, and that's the biggest thing. And I remember just back then, I, I was just like, I do not want to deal with this. I'm just like, I was, you know, immature. And I was just not like, I was like, fuck this shit. I don't want to do it anymore. And it was it's work. It's work. A hundred percent. It's it's not glamorous to put it that way, but it is. Work. It, it is work. And it's, it's yeah it's it's ridiculous and it, it's like you got to realize that and honestly the biggest the biggest also i think the biggest one for, at least for me is like you know i'm on like this like learning myself and trying to understand grant who he is and like there mm-hmm. was this one girl um who i was dating actually when COVID happened i'm kind of glad i met her you know like literally like grooviest person and it's like it was like a like yin and yin, like the love language is there but like we were kind of opposite people but it was a good thing like yin and yang you don't want someone fully like you want a little bit different so like smart gal uh went to oh god if i say the schools you'll know whatever uh it's like claremont mckenna i think that's what it's called you know mm-hmm. like with scripts and like they're all connected those that kind of college yeah she went there uh you know this is another topic we'll go there like the apps but that's a different thing. like met her there didn't know what it's gonna be very like you know, chill, sweet person met her. And I was just like, 
oh my gosh, she's super chill. Where's the Tevas or Tevas? You know, loves hammocking. You know, we go, we went to the lake. You know, we listened to music. We, we ate PB and J sandwiches. Like I played the guitar. Like it was so chill was and cool. like it was just so pure and like we were very open and like it was just great. And her, I loved her folks and her folks liked me and like, and like my parents, like at first, like, oh, another girl, Grant, blah, blah, blah. But then once they, she saw she stuck around a little bit longer, they like, they fell in love with her and like, yeah. And like, that's, and like, you know, like we talk about darkness or regrets. I sometimes, and like, I've been meaning to get this out or talk to someone about this. And like, I haven't talked about, it. and I don't know why I'm choosing you, Carly. So, but like, like I'm choosing you. So I, I hope it's okay for it's anyone fun. who listens, whatever part of Grant. It's like, I like, I fucked up. I, I fucked up like, you know, in Sacramento, mm -hmm. but like in the summer, I like my folks bought like a little, like a condo apartment, like in like HB, uh, Long Beach area. Cause that's where my mom grew up and she missed that area. And like, I was down Come there, to yeah, Huntington beach and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Huntington beach now, that's a whole different story. What, what it became with the whole mask, but that we're not going to, that's a whole different story. Oh, I don't even know. Oh, oh yeah. Huntington <laughs> beach. They just kind of Trump supporters. They don't fuck with masks, oh. no vaccines like that. Oh, yeah. I had a Bernie shirt. They told me to fuck off yeah, the whole, no. whole, whole, Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. The beach tried to keep to themselves. I remember like Hermosa was right next to us, but the, everyone was Love like Laguna. in war. Like who's better? Love Laguna though. Laguna I'm here for. Yes. I'm here for Laguna. I love Laguna. And I hope anyone who's from Huntington Beach, I don't hate you. I just don't know why you all attacked <laughs> me. Anyways. <laughs> going back to what it was it was just you know yeah. um i was in huntington beach and like you know like you said distance and like obviously i could go back to sacramento but i was just i was enjoying the beach because like sacramento it's the capital nothing's there i'm here it's the beach you know and also covid was happening so college you could go really it's just basically they're saying you can't stay on campus so i was like well, my folks just got this like condo place. Why don't I just stay here and just for like during school year? So it was like, you know, went like or tried to surf, whatever you want to call it, or at least boogie board and did all that and then went to class and it was great. And I don't know, there was just like, and then like, you know, there's, there's, there's Southern California girls. I'm not saying I cheated. That's not where I'm going with this, but I was just like, I was just like, wow, there's all these <laughs> girls here. And like, I have friends and like, they're taking me to these parties and all these girls are hitting me up. And it's like, and it made me think of her and like, I, I felt to say the name, fuck. <laughs> and it was just like, <laughs> shit, man. And she, and like, I missed her a lot, but at the same time, I felt like she's very like uh, a type, if you know what I mean? Like very like focusing on the work career is my job. Like, this is like, mm -hmm. I like, I want to focus on my career. And I was like, that's totally fine. And but I'm also like, yeah, I'm focused on my career, but I also like wanted a family and thinking of that, not saying that we're talking about that, but you know, we're just whatever. And like, I realized at the point it was just like, I'm not willing to do this. I realized. And like, I got a big head and I thought I could meet someone else or something like you were talking about wanting to break free. And like, she came out to see me for a week and it was great. I, but I remember that last day I broke up with her when she came out to visit me. And I was just like, and I thought it was good. And then, you know, you know, then I mingled and I met other people and everything. Cause I'm not gonna like meet someone, then go meet someone else. That's just fucked up. If you got to tell if communicating is an important thing. And like, I did that, mm -hmm. but then I realized like some of these people, it was like more of like a one night kind of stand situation. And I realized that I was like, these aren't fulfilling connections. Like after like yeah. you meet them, then they leave. Then that loneliness comes in at night. And like it's worse yeah and then with it it yeah it's, it's worse and with her it was like yeah we mingle and stuff but then like but it was more than that we would tell jokes or we would say the stupidest things or like i would say something crazy or just me being grant and then she would just like add on to that or just say something ridiculous just to play with my like totally. my goofiness and it was just like it was connection it was real it, it, it was really real all I the other stuff is fluff yeah but just like leaves you more empty than you started exactly <laughs> and i've been in like like four relationships in my life and like and, she, and like out of all of them like she that was real like love like i talked about this in a podcast a long time ago but like that was like like real love i realized that like i truly do love her and like 
still do today. Like I'm always to be, and we're still friends. We still talk and like, you know, she'll still send me memes and stuff and like, but it was just like, go ahead. It's, it's sorry to cut you off, but I feel like this is such an example of like right person, wrong time. You know how you can have like yes, right person, yes, it, right. Am I saying that right? Right person, wrong time, 100%. and then wrong person, right time. Yeah, it it really was, and it was like, yeah. and like I just thought, you know, and I knew she kind of wanted to get back together, and I just kind of like blew her off a little, just like did, like not blow her. I still texted her, but not like, you know, take a while, focus on grand and stuff, and then. You know, my parents are always like, you fucked up. Why the fuck did you leave her? Great, you a dumbass, man. Like, why the... And then my sister's like, yeah, she was perfect. Like, you fucking idiot. And I was like, okay, thanks, guys. That makes me feel real great inside. Like, because, like, she tutored my, like, my sister, like, an AP, whatever it was. Like, she was, she was, she was a smart cookie, you know, like, and, like, they connected and she knew friends of friends of mine. So it was, it was really cool. And, and, like, then I was like, well, let's see if I can get back together. Then I look, see how she she posts a picture with another dude, and I was like, "Fuck, oh. fuck, <laughs> are you kidding me?" That's like one of those heartbreaking things is to be like, because I feel like everyone, if you long for someone and if you miss them, you kind of like the maybe it's the ego, like you kind of just assume that they're doing that for you too, or at least you yeah, hope. you hope. And then it's that moment where you're just like, "Whoa, they had a whole different life, like a whole different reality going on." It was, yeah, it was, and it's just like. I'm just going to say this. Maybe other people say it's different, but he kind of looks like me. He's tall, you know, you know, Caucasian, kind of brown hair, kind of groovy a little, <laughs> granola-y. And I'm like, this looks like a, a replica of Grant a little bit, you know? And I was like, interesting. Hey, if it's meant to be, it will be. But that, I that, truly, that, I'm such a believer in that. That is true. And that is like the biggest thing. And like, that's why I'm not like sweating. I just... I, that was just I just appreciate that taste of what I had like it was more like it was like yeah you don't get me wrong like sex is great and all but it wasn't I didn't like that's why I wasn't with her I was with her because of her bot like her mind and her right. like you know her soul yeah her body of course but like you know it was like all three beautiful things and like the jokes that's yeah. the one thing I think I missed like the most it's just we would just tell fucking or it wasn't even jokes it was just like how we you know we're talking we're just cracking up just saying things just randomly and it was just always a good time you know and it's it's almost like it it breaks my heart even to like hear your experience because I think that you might be able to relate to this like the more experience I got with dating the more I realized how rare it is not to like rub dirt in your room (laughs) yeah yeah to that it is to find that whole package where you literally vibe with them on so many different levels it's it's there's so many different types of chemistry, emotional, sexual, mental, like and mental, like every mental is huge so for much. me now lately. I don't even care like like sexual, like it's whatever. Like, but I care about because you gotta realize like you're gonna be with this person. You gotta see if you can hold a conversation or like you can like at least be yourself. A hundred percent. Something that might make you feel better. But I still hope in the end that it works out. I I read something where it was like I don't believe in just one soulmate. I believe that like there's soulmates and not, you don't have to like end up with them necessarily. It's like that person, this purpose that she served for you is she showed you so many beautiful things that you like in someone. Uh, and now you know exactly, you're so sure of that going Literally forward. what my mom said. So like now, like yes. it's like a filter you can say, I know what I look for. Or at least I know when I talk to someone, like I can tell like, it's X and A or it's going to, or it's a green light. Like I know it's, it's good or bad. Like, so it, it, it's great. And like, I, I, at the same time, like, like she's great, but like, I also, I didn't mention like, there's things like, I don't think she was the one, you know, even though I said like it was great and I, it, I do believe it was true love. Like there was things like, you know, she really wanted to focus on a career and she wanted no kids. She hates kids. And I was like, values are, it's huge. Yeah. This is one thing I remember from my psych classes. It was like, okay, um, everyone thinks that compatibility is like the most important thing. And mm-hmm. while it is important, it's values that predicts how long the relationship is going to last mm-hmm. because you can't, you can't argue with that. Like if someone, if you don't align that way, then it's there, you're going to be fighting an uphill battle and it's eventually going to break it. I thought that was so interesting because I've always been someone that always thought compatibility was like everything. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. And I think values matter because like, don't get me wrong. 
like I hear people like they tell my cousin says she never wanted kids and look at her now she has kids and then like I know it's the thing but like with her I like she was so determined like to the point I think like we're talking like you know no like eggs or whatever just like certain like the whole like she just wants to focus on her career and like that's it like she's determined like and I think that's great and I know she's gonna do amazing and make a huge difference in the science community and all that by all means go her but it's like I like I know I want kids like that is I want to be the fun dad I want to be like a modern family like Phil like I just want to like and I'm totally fine being listen out there for the future wife like I'm down being the home dad if you want to bring home the money because I am down to take care of the kids. Fuck the job. I'm yes. here just to have fun. I'm not. Just, I'm here to also make money too. But like, you could be the real earner for this house, and I'll just you know take care of everything else. Totally down switching. I love that. To- we need more like unthreatened men like you. <laughs> I I am here for it. I am here for it. And it's like, yeah, man. I think it's so. Yeah, that's it. Could have never worked. Yeah, and that's what I realized. But yes, it, it's sobering but it's true it's just it's just reality it's just you gotta and that's the biggest thing it's like i like to daydream a lot sometimes or like have these ideas mm-hmm. in my head and it's like and like i'll go there and I like and especially if i'm making a song if i like make like whatever a chord and i'm really getting into my daydream and then i'm thinking of stuff and i'm like ah shit like this is fantasy this isn't real like you're not you know grooving in the van or whatever you whatever you're thinking it's like you got to come back to earth and you got to keep a reality check and that's like like this year's goals, like make sure I have a reality check. Like, you know, I have stuff I want to do, but they're not going to be ridiculous. Like there's small little goals to help build that ball to create the, the main goal. Like I'm just want to be real with myself and strive and not feel stuck. I feel. Yes. You need, it's like a, a grounded feeling, but not mm-hmm. too. Yeah. It's, and it's balance again. It's being grounded by like, um, the balance between dreaming big, but then also being grounded in the practicality of it. I am such a like, oh, I'm going to do it all and I'm going to do it now. And then I don't have any of the groundedness that goes into that. I'm very like um, dreamer, exactly like mm-hmm. you were saying. So that is my goal this year too, is just like finding that balance. And I'm actually really happy we had this conversation because even like after what I was posting last night where I was like, I'm going to hustle and I'm going to like focus, prioritize all on that. Like this, this is the extreme part mm-hmm. of my personality coming out. And I was talking to my sister and now talking to you too. And, and it, I keep getting reminded by like people and in, in, in my surroundings being like, but you need balance too. Yeah. Like you need to enjoy yourself too. And like, 100%. and I, some girl, um, I forget who it is. Someone on Instagram, she, has made a huge amount of money from master classes and like online coaching and whatnot. And she was saying, I wish I didn't build my empire off of this. Like I need um, this idea that I need to hustle 24 seven. She's like, cause it created this baseline for me that like, if I'm not achieving at that level, then I don't ever feel good enough. And she's like, yeah, I was successful. Yeah, I brought in a lot of money, but like I always compare myself to that and I don't. So mentally she's at this place where she's trying to find a level that brings her back to success and happiness Mm. because she's like, I can't operate at that level. That's not human. Yeah. Being human is such a like hard concept for me to grasp because I struggle a lot with perfectionism. Oh yeah, I I get that. It's it's, 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 It's draining. It's like- yeah, it's so draining. And like, maybe you can last for two days. Like, do you ever have two days where you're like, I was perfect? I don't know if this is. Oh, just yeah. Me after or... New Year's, like, I'm like, my New Year's resolution, <laughs> like, I am here, I'm going to the gym. And then after like the third or fourth day, oh my God, what am I doing with myself? I see the donut store or whatever, or the croissant or whatever you want to call it. I'm walking over there instead of going to Planet Fitness, Planet Granite. Oh, so, yes. yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'll get these ideas in my head of like, Okay, if you start the day meditating, reading, um, journaling, working out, and then you follow it by being super productive, and then you cook healthy meals and you go on a walk, like that is what you need. That's what all you you need to achieve in order to be perfect and lovable and like enough and like for this world. And when I get in that mindset, I can do it for two days, but then the humanness in me comes out and I get like, maybe I get shit sleep, maybe something like externally happens that like fucks up my brain mm. and makes me but sad but that's the thing you, and... you said it's like there's i sorry to interrupt like like you're saying like like no. like like i don't think there is perfect i think perfect is a yeah. word 
that we have you know used in the English dictionary so much to the point it psychologically is damaging us as humans. I think oh, so I true. I think people say you want to be this way, you want to act this way, like growing up, and it's like, and I'm realizing, you know, why do I need to act this way? Like, you know, learning from like one of my mentors uh, at school, who's I hope to come on here soon. He's like a true like groovy hippie kind of guy, and I love him to death. And he's just like he opened my mind about like, you know. You should be who you want to be. If you want to, like, no one's going to, like, it's hard to be disciplined. Like, like, I'm just, like, being, especially with us, like, ADD, it's hard as fuck. Like, people who they do in the army, it's, like, drilled into your fucking brain, my dad would tell me, like, because he did the army and stuff. And, like, I'm, like, shit, like, I mean, I understand you got to be, like, you know, disciplined and stuff. But, like, I am with some things, but, like, with other things, like. You know, I'm going to live my life like you're saying, like you got to like you yeah. you can't be hard on yourself. And I think we're the hardest critics of ourselves versus everyone else in the world. So true. And like you assume just because you're like that on yourself that like everyone else is like that of mm-hmm. you. It's so not true. Like, uh, that's what I, I will have to check myself um, as someone like as a former recovering people pleaser and yeah. someone that care used to care so much what other people thought of me is that it's like think of how much energy you spend on thinking about yourself that's the same energy that everyone else is expending on themselves Mm. you know it doesn't leave much room to think about the it doesn't leave that much room to negatively think about other people and the people that do negatively think thoughts about you they're not worth your time Mm -hmm. like that was so hard for me to accept too is that like those are the you don't even want those people in your life you want to create a community or a group where they're positive and loyal, like, I guess, yeah, well, I don't know, maybe loyal, but like positive and just upbeating and just like, they bring good energy uh, for you, you know? Yeah. Um, supportive. Yeah, supportive. Like, I think that's, that's where, and being, and being realistic, like, like keeping you grounded and just being real and like, yes. like, like take film or music, like you show something to someone. And the biggest thing I learned is like, at least in school, is like, don't say it's good. It's, it's all right get detailed with me like explain to me like let's take the photo i guess um you have a photo don't say yeah it looks good tell me why you like it because the shadowing at the 90 degree angle here is good or or it's um or up your vocab or whatever you know just like explain give me or if it's not good i can handle criticism as long as like there's a reason behind it just don't tell me it's shit tell me why like take music uh song's great but you need to have the bass come in a little bit earlier because it creates more of a feeling for people to resonate like i need you know really got to like make it logical to understand instead of just saying something you know that's that's what creates real connection like and it just makes me think about whenever i've cre- uh whenever i've really connected with someone on instagram it was because of those comments that you're talking about it's like it like i i had commented how much I loved the emotion that this, this like raw emotion that he captured Mm -hmm. of this little kid. And because it was that and not, oh, this is great photo. Like, it's just that level of deep connection that I don't think we're used to anymore on such a like superficial, like fast paced social media world. Mm -hmm. But it's so true. Whenever I would, I, whenever I have interacted with someone like that, that's always what bridges that gap of like, because otherwise everyone's just like kind of a rope. Don't you ever feel like this? Mm -hmm. Like people aren't real until you break that barrier. I got to send you a song that's called gotta be real. It's a really like, it's a great yes, song from the 80s. But like, yeah, I think there's a lot of people because there's a lot of like hype men or hype man, whatever they call it, the term is like where they hype you and shit and like, but they're not being real with you. They're just trying to like, they're like, you know, like those fishes, like with sharks, they just kind of latch on and they just like stay yeah. for the and they're but they're not really helping you. And when you're doing great, like, or posting something like impressive. Or like made an accomplishment. Like, they're like, I've been here since day one. And it's like, no, you haven't. You just been like, you just been quiet or been like talking shit behind my back. You haven't really helped me flourish in any way. People come out of the woodworks when you're thriving. <laughs> it's it's interesting. It's interesting why people are like that. They're just like, I guess, snakes, you can say. And it's and opportunistic. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, social, I guess, like yeah. achievement climbers or social climbers, just trying to climb up to the top. Yeah. And it's like, like, I, another reason why I had to get out of LA. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I had like a, a friend who I was like close friend to our family and just like 
realized he he just used us for like social climbing you know and i was just like you know and and like that was hard and it's still and i haven't talked to them what you know five months now you know maybe eight or six and it's like my mom is still hurt because she like really like you know they were close and like i don't know how i feel i think i'm okay with it but it's just it breaks you like the ones you thought were close it's like not it It was fuck exactly I went through so many, I went through like multiple decades of it and it was just so draining in the end. And it almost to the point when I like started meeting people on my travels and I was like, whoa, there's genuine people out here. Mm-hmm. And like, they don't care about like the superficial things that I was so used to like experiencing in my day to day or whenever I would try to make new friends. Uh, I basically stayed friends with like my college friends all throughout LA because I like, trusted them and they were good mm-hmm. people to me. But like whenever I tried to make new friends, I'd always get slapped in the face of like these values that didn't align with me. And then when I went outside the bubble, I was like, whoa, I know people will say like, well, if you escape your city or wherever like that, those same emotions are still going to follow you. Sometimes it really is the environment yeah. that is affecting you. I don't know. That was just no, my experience. I, I get it. I think, I mean, I went to University of Arizona. So like that you already know, like the school and how they, they act. don't get me wrong. U of A is a great school. It's just people look at the frats and sororities and like, yeah, they're there. But like, if you look past that, there's granolas out there. There's hippies. Like it's a desert. Yeah. And like, there's people like, you know, there. And like, once you find that group that, you know, are open-minded and show love and compassion and, aren't afraid to try new things it changes your world totally it's so cool i i really get so dreamy about humans like i just think it's so cool that you can meet people and like maybe in a chance encounter and then that person can change your life like the rest of your life like it gives Mm. me fucking chills oh it feels good it it, 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 it's like that you know like there's that different feeling of like happiness like you know like i know that feeling for sure like i've been having it a lot lately uh with the people around me like you know like you get that there's that i don't know what the first feeling is but like with love you get that like you feel something you're happy you feel good like something but then this other feeling about yourself you feel good and then this other feeling that i've been feeling just like the people around me like i feel like i guess it's love but like a platonic way you know like just meeting people like like you feel good and you feel like you're not alone and like i feel that for sure yes. like the platonic like like with my classmates with you with my boss steve and like with some other the film community like i, I just been like it feels good and like i just made like the best feeling it's like i created a group chat with it's- like my colleagues and we're just like talking about things and the music and stuff and like like they're saying yeah i totally agree like why like i, I don't feel alone and it's like yeah man i don't feel alone either fuck yeah it's the most beautiful thing. I get so nerdy about this because it's just, it, I think it's so incredible. I'm reading a book right now. It's called Heart Consciousness or mm. something like that. And it's, there's literal scientific evidence behind what you're talking about. Yeah. It's there are, our hearts, like they spew out frequencies, positive and negative frequencies. And so like, even after this conversation, like this has been like, I'm so, this has been the best I loved this, mm-hmm. like connecting and all of the conversations we have. Like I feel my heart after this, the frequency that's going to be emitted, that affects everyone in my environment. Mm-hmm. It affects everyone in your environment. And it is such a ripple effect. And I'm not talking about it in a like very great scientific way, but yeah. there is scientific evidence but that these positive connections and like uh, heart opening connections send out ripple effects throughout the world and really connect people and i think that people are starting to notice it more with covid because we had such separation yeah and then when you had connection you were like whoa this feels so good it's like euphoric i 100 <laughs> percent. i think people realized took a step back and they looked at what you know what means to them like who were the, who was there for them who hit them up you know when yes. you can see someone like your uh, foundation, you know, who was there in that building blocks. And um, it's, it's a really eye opening. And like, I don't know, I feel like I've been on this like spiritual path or like just trying to figure myself out since like maybe sophomore year of college or whatever, you know, and it's like the more and more I realize like there's other people out there. It's, it's, I don't know, it's gratifying. I don't know. It just feels good, you know, and it's, 
you and it's know what I mean? so rewarding. Mm-hmm. Sorry to cut you off. No, go ahead. Go for I it. I just was curious if you felt this way too, that like once you start on that path, like it's crazy how you just like start attracting that. Like I, I truly feel that way about you. Like mm-hmm. I feel like because I started really diving into certain work and like even like the top, like all of our, the topics that we're talking about are so aligned. I like don't feel like that's an accident. I feel mm-hmm. like it just, the universe really does bring you to people on your same wavelength when you start doing that type of work and like you start accepting or taking away the people that don't aren't Mm -hmm. on your level aren't on your vibration and then like wanting to manifest people that are like I truly do feel like the universe does bring you it's so true it's really true and that's why I feel like you know like we can go like going back like like with the apps and stuff you know I feel like that's I don't want to say it's wrong, but I think that it takes away what the universe wants. Maybe you could probably say the universe wanted both of us to go on the app. But I really believe it's just like, like anything platonic or romantic, or whatever, you shouldn't force anything. You know, I think you just got to let it happen. That's why I think, you know, um, so we talk about like, we're working on ourselves this year and stuff. And we're going to keep that promise. That's why I think it's so yes. important. That's why it's like, work on yourself and then that that person who's meant to be with you will come to you or like you will both walk into each other's lives instead of just swiping you know like yes. like that feels like that's not natural at all i think people got really impatient like myself included especially when i like just got out of that long term relationship of like being like we're losing time we need to make this happen mm-hmm. and so I went on the apps for like a year straight mm-hmm. and I totally agree. I don't feel like nothing came from it. I don't know. I have some friends that have positive stories of things that happened on the apps, but I definitely think that like energy it, serving someone's energy is so important mm-hmm. and it makes it, you, you know, things flow right away. Yeah. It's kind of crazy for me to think about all the people that I got hung up on where it was like, obviously not flowing yeah and you just like cling so much and you're you're like maybe your ego just like wants it to work really bad and Mm -hmm. and then when you have one person that shows you like what true flowing feels like and like and when it just feels easy that's when you like look back and you're like I can't believe that I got so hung up on this this person that made dating or like loving someone feel so difficult yeah I everything you said, I just, it, I feel it because it's so true. You and it's it. like your ego blocks the, the cloud that's right in front of you, what you're not seeing. And also I think it's just like, you know, how my parents met was like, they have a story. They're both like, my dad's a doctor, my mom's a nurse. And like someone had a gurney and ran oh. over my dad's foot. And like, oh. and then my mom walks in <laughs> and strange. she's like, I guess he's like, did you see someone run over my foot? And she's like, it looks okay to me. And then I guess at that moment he said, I knew she was going to be my wife, blah, blah, blah. And like they, I think she also patched his foot or something. So like, it just was like organic and natural and like in the surrounding. And it's like, I don't know, like that whole, like we talk about vintage or like how people meet back then sounds way better. Stories way better instead of like a a like or whatever. And it's like, yeah, man, I think it's, it's hard. I think it's like, I think it's what's hard is like when you, when you have that loneliness is that, you know, you can just one download click away to just download it and start talking so i think it's i think you have to stick with it and embrace it and not like take the easy way out you know what i mean just to go meet someone a hundred percent god this is like speaking to my soul because i used to use the apps and dating as like such a way to self-soothe when i felt lonely and Mm -hmm. what that did was when i was alone I didn't know what the fuck to do with myself. I was like, I can't sit with myself. I can't be alone. Like I I needed someone to love me to feel Mm -hmm. like I wasn't lonely and that I was lovable. And that what that does, that's like a recipe for disaster. It really for the rest of your life. It really is. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. And I think and like I think some people are realizing that more and more. Um, like at least in my like like age group I hope you know I always felt like I always felt like 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 I'm not the games type I'm here like like because like you said we don't want to waste time like we want to like be real like 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 there's like it's a balance to that like yes you don't want to waste time but also you have to embrace that it might not work out you know what I mean so it's it's an interesting Mm -hmm. thing and I was watching this 
oh god i think his name's benny blanco i think that's that's his name and like he he like a producer he made the song diamonds you know with rihanna and you know that one and he did that the song for justin recently bieber and like he was talking about in this like interview that's like people are so into like you know rushing due date we gotta get this done gotta get this done it's like bro let's just relax and chill he said he has songs that like he made eight years ago and now he's releasing because like if it's a good song or whatever it'll it will happen it will be the right timing and it's like you you exactly. know when the slot will be right for you like you said with the other yes. girl like it wasn't the right time or whatever it's the most wonderful thing the most freeing thing in life for me this past year was giving up timelines and like the rush when i stopped judging myself for being the age I'm at and not having my like significant other and not having like my house planned and like all this stuff, like stability. Yeah. When I stopped judging myself for that and when I started realizing like you have time, it may not be the same as your friends or like what culture is, but you have a lot of time. Yeah. That's when I I released myself from this mental prison that I didn't even know I was, it was me that was creating it. Like it wasn't anyone else. Mm. Like you have a choice. And I think so many people don't realize that. No. Yeah. I think like someone was saying, I forget who it was, uh, but like they were like some person on a Netflix show and like I followed them on whatever on Insta. And like, they were just saying on their like live that that's like, like 60 is not old like like i don't know i always thought like when you get to 60 it's, you gotta retire so old is when you hit 80 or 90 that is like old like you so you you have a lot of fucking time and i think like society has maybe maybe just america at least like it has fucked us up to the point where it's you have to you know go to college get the degree you know find your significant other get the house the mortgage all this and, and it's like no nah, you want to live your life to the fullest and it's yeah. like you don't have to follow the wave in the path, but like no one tells you that, you know, you're just, you just see everyone else doing it. So natural instinct is to follow everyone else, what they do. And it's like, I am not about that at all. And it's like, and I, I see you're not either. You're just doing what makes Carly happy. And it's, but it's scary because it's scary, but also exciting because like, A, you're following your dreams, but also there's no pavement onto this, on to this wave we're riding or you're riding. It's like, where will exactly. this take me i feel like i have like limitless time now mm -hmm. and it's just the most freeing thing and i i don't i think that when i was so concerned with with the other i was making all the wrong choices for myself it was like i started realizing that all the choices i had made were based on what uh, would would make other people happy or like what my friends were doing what culture said mm -hmm. and that's when i had to really look at myself and i'm like okay, if that, I, I can follow that and I can fit in and be miserable or I can just like pave my own way, do my own thing and like not give a fuck. And it's so much easier said than mm. done, you know? Yeah, like it, I had to be brought down to my knees and be so disgusted and like pissed with my decisions in order to be like, okay, nothing is as bad as what this feels like. Yeah. <laughs> Like it, I did have to get there first. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, but now it's like, I don't, I don't know how I ever lived the other way. Yeah. I kind of operate that way. I don't know if you can relate like, and, or if this is just like a human nature thing. Like I always have to be brought down to like the depths of my despair no. to be like, oh fuck, I have to do something. L literally, <laughs> literally. Yeah. I, weirdly enough, same, in, <laughs> same like situation happened to me recently. Like, like I have to hit like, I wouldn't say like, I mean, rock bottom, you know, like it's good. Then you, there's only one way up, but like, at least like, maybe it's not rock bottom, but like at least to a point where like, not I fully fucked up, but like people around me, like I realized like, oh shit, like, like really has to hit me to the point. Like, I don't know. That's just how I work when I know like I'm put on the spot and it's like that anxiety or whatever is in me. It's like, if I don't know it or whatever it is, or like, then like, yeah, then I'm like, okay, I never want that feeling ever again, because yeah. like, you don't want to feel that ever again. Like, why should we suffer? Why torment ourselves mentally or physically in that kind of way? And it's like, I'm not for that anymore. And I'm trying and I want people yeah. to realize that you don't have to live that way. You can be the life you want to live. And it's like, I don't know, I think especially like in America, people tell you to get jobs, you know, 
and like you got to okay. do this nine to five or whatever but like like you're a creative person i can see and it's like getting the desk job was not gonna that was not gonna be your path at all no <laughs> i tried i tried and i was like no i get very like i get very I had once I got to know myself that's when I realized like what aligns with me I'm I don't like people telling me what to do mm -hmm. and I like even if I see like a billboard ad and it says like you need this in your life I'm like don't tell me what I yeah. need like, like you're really upset <laughs> so like once I learned this about myself that's when I was able to like really find the type of job that aligned with me the type of relationships that aligned with me like whenever anyone like would violate my boundaries by like ugh, I truly dislike controlling people mm -hmm. like and people that try to like tell me how to live my life, um, judgmental people like it, that's a whole other story. It's like oh, people already have it hard enough. Why are you yeah. making other people's lives? Because they're hard, used like, to it. Harder. They're used to people being under their like you know yes. wrath or grip or whatever you want to call it, and it's like. It's and then when someone, it's a power thing. yeah, it's a weird dominant shit thing. And it's like, yeah, and it's like, it's like when they have someone I've who's never under, go ahead. Like, sorry to cut you no, off, but that, that's, I don't ever, that's never like, I get it when I think about it conceptually, but it's like, it, that has never resonated with me like at all. Like I truly don't see eye to eye with those types of people. I feel like we have all been through our own things in life. And like so many things have shaped who we are. Why would you ever know what's good for that person? Like it just is wild to it, me that people think they know. No, it really it is. I think it's better how they should put it. It's like, here's a suggestion. And this, I'm just yeah. like, like from data, but don't like throw it down my throat. And I think that's like a, it's, that's why I think in America, like it's so fucked up how they, they tell you a certain way. Like for me, like I went to a Catholic school, like elementary and then high school. And then luckily I went to public and like, you know, being like going to understand like Jesus is the way, marriage is this, blah blah blah, and it was like, it's like, one way to live. like it's it's like I understand my folks are Catholic and shit, but like, like then I started questioning certain things, like you know, like gays are it's the wrong thing, but it's like a few of my friends are gay and I love them to death. Why is that wrong? It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. And then I lost a friend like sophomore mm -hmm. year of like uh high school you know from suicide and it was like that like that for to the tipping point it's like how would god do this and the priest like was trying to give some thing or whatever but really i really think he just didn't know what to say to me at that point and it's like i don't like i talked about it before but i don't think like you should be, i don't want to say if you believe in god sure whatever i think it's more of a comfort thing but like why should we be forced upon this idea like it just seems like a cult kind of thing instead of just being free it's it's fascinating i, 100, I agree completely to each their own and i think that like religion in a positive way if it brings like positive guidance and values to someone's life then like i'm so all for that but not in the sense of like pushing it down people's throats mm -hmm. even like spirituality there's so much like um like i'm better than you like that type of mentality with, with it too so i love i love meeting people like you where it's just like you just want to connect and like understand the other person better. It's not like you think that you're better than anyone because you're on a spiritual yeah, path. Yeah, I'm not you know? like those Malibu fuckheads who are like, you know, who pay <laughs> for like a guru for like 30, 50,000, whatever the fuck they're paying them to have their awakening bullshit. Like, like, fuck <laughs> that shit. Like, no, nah, like it's, and I'm not like, I'm not Hindu or anything like that. Like, I do appreciate like, you know, Hare Krishna and I do appreciate their religions and stuff like that. And, you know, Jainism and all the certain types of religions and Buddhism and like all that. But it's like, I'm more just like, like, cause, but they believe in gods and like, I'm not saying it could be real or whatever. I'm more like, you know, like you say, universe, I believe that like live your life to yeah. the fullest, mm -hmm. follow it, um, be good to others. I believe in karma. I believe in all that, you know, and I believe in like, mm -hmm. like live in the moment, live, you know, yes. right now, because like. Like I had this conversation and this might be too, too real. Let me know because like, but like, no, nothing's too okay. <laughs> okay. Cause some people, I mean, maybe they, then they can't handle it, but I think, Open the plug. yeah, I mean, we, <laughs> I think we've been a lot real on this episode, but uh, I think <laughs> when you die, you're, you're just, that's it. You go back into your consciousness. I think you're just, I know it might sound like maybe just a race, but I think that is it. 
I think there is, you're just done. Like, you know, when you're born, like you don't, you're in your consciousness and then you, you're, you appear, you're awakened. I think we are in the awakened yeah. period at the stage. And that's why you have to live to the fullest because once you get to that point, when you die, you just go back into your consciousness and like, I guess you're a race, you know, spirit in the sky, like really that is it. And like, maybe you feel that person who you love who passed away through the spirits, you know, you know, so that's why I think it's so important. And I have debates with people on this all the time. Some people are like, I never thought of that. It's cool. And then some people are like, how could you? There's, there's a God. Don't tell me that. But I think we use that because we're scared. Like you talked about death. Like I remember my grandma who went to church at 5 a.m. to like 6, 30 or whatever it was, you know, every day her whole life. And then to the last point when she was dying, I remember, she, I think she, uh, you know, she, yeah, it was my mom, not her sister was like, you know, do you think God is real? This person who is Catholic her whole entire life and believes in God. And at that moment when she knew she was leaving, questioning, is God real? Like that just shows you it's, it's, and it's a scary thought, but it's, you got to, like you said, you got to embrace that darkness and realize death is a peaceful thing. That's what I was going to say. It's all about the darkness again. Like it, there's something so wonderful about realizing that it all ends because that's almost the idea that makes you question everything else you're like why would I ever live my life for anyone else if we only have this short time and we only have this like and that's what for a while it kind of made me live this life of like I only pleasure was like the only thing that I like went for I was like well why the I truly didn't understand I was why the fuck would we be here if we weren't supposed to enjoy ourselves like so I just wanted to like just live a life where I'm always like having fun Mm. and and I'm so happy I'm almost like in a way happy that I lived like such a hedonistic like lifestyle for a lot of my 20s because I look back and I'm like I'm so I had a great time and I really really like lived life to the fullest on many occasions even if it wasn't completely aligned with like who I am and who I want to be I at least like really lived my life Mm -hmm. and had a lot of experiences that like enriched me in a lot of ways um but then again I am going I'm like now as I mature I'm trying to be like yeah I want those experiences but I also want to be more grounded balance again Mm -hmm. (laughs) like like balance and darkness are a theme it 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 (laughs) really it really is and it's like I think the craziest thing is like I like relate to a lot of people like you said 28 like i'm only like 23 but like i like but a lot of the people i talk to are you are you're so impressive to me like uh, i yeah 98 baby we're we're young as fuck i know but like like but that's the thing no but you're so like evolved and like so spiritually evolved i i my brain was not even there at that point. I just think, so I'm very I just think because like, you know, I like, that's the thing. A lot of my friends are older than me. Like they're like 26, yeah. 27, 30, I, 43, you know, like, like just because like, I can't that handle that like immature, like level, like, you know, I could be goofy, but like, you know, to an extent, yeah. you know, but like, I, I, I think it's interesting because everything you're talking about, I feel that, but just at a different age and because maybe maybe like we all have different paths and stuff. And I think like my goofiness kind of ended after I, my friend passed away. And then more of my friends passed away in college just from fentanyl, that drug, you know, they were, they were, you know, oh, it was yeah. laced and like, you know, shit got real. And then I just realized That's like, funny. you know, like not to bring it negative, but just being open. It's just like, no. like, like, it's just, it's just like, you, you got to appreciate life. So like, it's, So times like, you know, we talk about darkness or like, you know, when it gets really dark, you think, I think about those reflections and I'm like, like the people who you love, you know, that hurt us more when they left or whatever happened. And it's like, you talk about like, that's why you got to appreciate and the balance in life and have fun, but also not go too crazy because you don't want to like, I don't know, die or like get fucked up too crazy. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a balance. It's it's at the end of the day. it's interesting so true and it's so true how those experiences like really wake you up and be like whoa appreciate this like it could be gone in an instant yeah it really can and that's why like you talk about like living life and like those in the video you showed me of like you know the film and like your photos it's so inspiring because like it makes me like yeah i want to travel and like like i have goals like you know what i mean like we all have goals like i want to travel 
I want to live in New Zealand or that part of France or something where Bridget lives. And, but also I want to do the music and I also want to start a nonprofit organization and, you know, teach underprivileged kids music. Like, like there's so many like things I want to do. And it's like, like, you know, it's overwhelming with our brains and stimulation. And it's like, okay, you got to take a step no. back and how are we going to do it? And like, I so relate to this. Yeah. It's hard. But just recognize you have so much time. No, no, of course. Even the fact that you're so clear on it, like, that's really cool because you have so much of your 20 like I feel like my 20s was so was so about me not I was really disconnected from myself I didn't know what I wanted I didn't even know what my goals were I didn't know who I was and I feel like you already have a lot of that going on so I can just see you fucking thriving in this decade like so much more than a lot of other 20 year olds that I've because it's, it doesn't really force you to figure life out unless you go through really hard experiences like the one you, you were talking about. Mm. So in a way, sometimes it's a blessing. It really gets lets you like get to know yourself oh. and like appreciate life. Literally having this conversation <laughs> with my professor um, was it yesterday or two days ago, uh, basically like it's you, like having a tough life is good. Like you shouldn't have like, yes. you know, like get balanced, like you know, you need to have, you can have a fun parent, but then a tough parent. And it's like, you know, struggling is so crucial because if if you get spoon fed your whole life, you'll never understand what it feels like to actually earn something, you know, your worth and stuff. It's so crucial. Grit. Grit is the best quality in humans. I think it's like what you do with your suffering that says so much about you and it creates the most beautiful people. Like I, Every every quality that I really love about myself is from suffering. Mm. And that was something that actually really helped me accept my darkness was like in my past was like you wouldn't have been you wouldn't have the empathy, you wouldn't have the creativity, because they actually say trauma like affects the mm. part of your brain that enhances your creativity. And I truly yeah. think that my trauma <laughs> enhanced my creativity. And like the compassion I wouldn't have this strength where in resilience like so I I, I so agree with what you and the, the professor are saying like yeah. I, I'm I, I I'm grateful for those it's those important man it's so important and it's like it teaches you like well I think also like maturity but also it teaches you like how to handle situations you know because if you could stay calm and not overreact and just like you know, use the brain because we like to, it's fight or flight. You know, you, what are you going to do? You're going to freak out or you're going to logically think how we're going to handle this. And it's like, if you take the logical way, it can go smoother, you know, and like you can, you know, be in the moment when those scary moments happen. Like if you have a panic attack or anxiety attack or depression, like really soak that in and close your eyes and think about like, okay, why am I feeling this way? What is this? What could be the cause of this energy? And then feeling it. That's what I saw some, some video recently. And it was so interesting. It was like, we, people don't realize this, but like feeling your emotions actually means like feeling it physically in the body. Like that's how you feel your emotions. You sit with it. You realize like, wow, my, my chest, I have a lot of butterflies in my chest and you sit with it instead of numbing, distracting and just escaping that mm-hmm. like pe- like people don't realize that like we're when people say feel your emotions they're literally saying like just feel it in the body recognize that it's gonna pass and then it and then you're good yeah. this, it, it reminded me of something I heard in a podcast and she was saying and this helped me actually not always have to reach rock bottom to make a change like it's a it's a process I'm I'm that I'm working on mm-hmm. but she was like if you just allow yourself to feel your emotions, then that's that's almost what your brain considers rock bottom because you're finally allowing yourself to feel it rather than distracting where you can live like that for a long time, but it's never bad enough where you make a change. She's mm-hmm. like, if you just for one day, you maybe even one hour, let yourself feel the emotions, you can get past it. It's the it's the avoidance that makes it just like go on forever. And we literally were talking about you. It's like, you know, like the goals, like you don't take on a big goal, do little goals and build up the mountain yes. like you're climbing. And then you when then those little goals gets you to the big goal to that point. It's like, yes. it's like, take like, okay, for me, like 
So I've been on like, you know, ADD, like, you know, Adderall or whatever. But like, I don't want to be on that my whole life. Cause it makes you feel like a zombie or whatever. And I don't eat. And it's like, but you can't go cold turkey or the side effects are going to hit you oh. fucking hard. So like we've been tapering, I have so much damage. you know what I mean? So we've been, we're at 10 now and I feel, you know, I still can focus like I'm a little whatever, but like, it's a good, I, you see more of my personality and I can still focus. Yeah. So it's like, so it's a balance, but what were you going to say with this? Cause your eyes sparked when I said this topic. <laughs> I'm so passionate about this because I was on medication from 13 until um, August of this year. And I did what you're talking about where I really weaned off. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much the majority. That's the entirety of my adult life. And um, same thing. Muted my emotions. I didn't like how like I would feel depressed one day, but I would take the Vyvanse or the Adderall. Yeah. And then it was like, I didn't have to deal with it because I was just, and what that did was like, it stacked my emotions mm. so much where it was like, I was never dealing with anything because um, I had a pill that gave me motivation to get out of bed on the days where I was so depressed that I didn't want to get out of bed. Mm. So I was finally like, I need to deal with my shit. And I weaned off. And ever since I have kind of just been on this path of learning how to deal with my ADD in a natural way. And I feel like I'm coming out with a new routine. I'm going to keep you updated. Oh, yeah, please do. <laughs> like, that's that's the beauty because, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, I think it's a process. It's, if you know your mind, though, you can do it. Yeah, that's the thing. You got to like, you can't like get sucked into it because like, when I can't like focus or whatever, I'm like, oh, I guess I'll just take the pill or whatever to help me focus. And like, that's not the answer. And that's what my like, and that's like been my like, so at audio, you know, audio engineering, whatever. And like, there's something we call pro tools, which is like the software's industry standards. You have to like, if you want to do, you know, mix and master music for shows, movies, commercials, whatever, most people yeah. uses, uses it. And like, you know, you don't, and where I'm going to the school is to get my certification for it. You don't need the certifications, but they open the door for you. They help you get into places. And like, I didn't realize how hard it was going to be. Right. So like, like studying, like, you know, like, cause the college I was doing clouds and dinosaurs. So I was like, oh, okay, this is who oh, just memorize it. And I was just, I love that you say clouds and dinosaurs. No, literally took a, like the cloud class barely almost passed got a c plus in that that was fucking hard i thought that was gonna be easy <laughs> that was ridiculous dinosaurs that was the teacher was cool me and her were cool office hours kids go to office hours it will pay off the teacher will love you it paid off for me because i had to learn how to spell some of those fucking animals and or reptiles and it was not easy and anyways fo going back to what i was saying it's like to the point where it's like <laughs> focusing like like my mindset had to change because in college I was like, you know, I was here to memorize and just pass here. This is a career I want to do. I just can't like I have to understand this, like from like the front and the back. So like instead of us giving the slides, I take I realize I have to take the book and I'm a little bit slower and I have a little bit of dyslexia and all this stuff. So like I have to really like, you know, put a little bit more time than my other colleagues. But because like, you know, you want to do this for your life. It's like surgery. You got to understand the shit. You can't just look at the diagram once at med school then off like you know what i mean like you gotta this is your fucking career so like it's a whole different like studying strategy for me that like like i'm actually like trying to learn here and my brain has for the past four years it wasn't like that so it's really different and like and the first thought i was like i just need more to go on more higher adderall and i was like well fuck bro i don't want that feeling because we talked about earlier that feeling like after like classes and stuff, I felt lonely or empty. And my mom's like, go work out. I think I was, the medicine was wearing off just thinking about it. Now, you're, yeah. And then my emotions were coming out. Like, I'm just thinking of that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Just thinking of that right now, after you said that, fuck that's when you just said that, like a click, it clicked in me. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's crazy. And I think like, and back then, I don't know if they knew what, what Adderall did back then in like 98 or whatever. Um, I mean, and it was being handed out like candy like yeah everyone i knew was it was just yeah. getting it and it's like i remember like my mom didn't want me to go on it but my dad's like it's the only way he's gonna focus and i was like fuck like mom you need to fight a little bit harder for my brain shit man because like <laughs> because like it's like a meth and family. it's a part of like meth like it's like one off from like whatever it is the strength and it's like 
Fuck, man. It's controlled meth. It's controlled meth, basically. Because, like, look how fucking skinny. Like, shit, man. Like, I used to be, like, fat, biggie, small. Like, I used to be chubby when I was little. Fuck. And now I'm, like, bony. And it's, like, (laughs) it's crazy. And I think there's better ways for people, like, with ADD, like us, you know, to handle it. And it's, like, like, the moral of the story is this. It's, like, like, I told my mom I can get asked for her to go hire. And she's, like, no. You need you can handle this you're not like mind over matter here you can do this you don't need to like your scapegoat is to go take the fucking pill or go on a higher dose you can do this i know you can you just gotta like you said really handle it and like you know yeah you might have to study harder i understand that but let your professor know of course and everything and it's like you're right so like i'm not going up sticking with those tens and you know what was the the miracle part about the whole story I told my classmates, I'm just an open person, that I failed or whatever. And they know like my ADD and stuff. And I told my professors this whole last last weekend and this week, we all got on Zoom and stuff. And they just tutored me, all seven of them. And they all broke it up. And I have some later tonight and then I have tomorrow. And I'm going to take the test Friday. And they they want, like that community we talk about, they want me to pass this gauntlet or certification because they they, it's a family and like they're willing to put the extra hours of their time or after or their part-time job or whatever just for me to succeed and like more of the story is that like you don't give up on yourself like you got this yes don't give up on yourself and learn to when you need to ask for help that's a huge thing anything mental health related um, I found with like depression, ADD, like it, exactly that example that you were just talking about, like you won't receive unless you ask for help. It's, it's, it's so important. It's so important. And it's like, and I think you shouldn't like, and you should like think for yourself. Don't just go with anyone to give you an answer. I even do that. Like, like, like with, like with doctors, like, 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 like I'm not, I'm talking like, oh. I'm, you know what I mean? I'm talking about like, you know, like medications they give you, like, just don't take like, I'm not talking about vaccines. I'm like, do it. Go get the fucking vaccine, people. I'm that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like, like you know, like eight, <laughs> like Adderall, like stimulant drugs. Like, you, if you know it has methamphetamine in it, why would you give it to someone? Like, there has to be a better way right. to help. Because I don't know. My dad had had ADD, but he didn't take anything. And like, going to be honest, he's doing pretty good for himself right now. So like, same with my mom. You know what I mean? Didn't have it, didn't take it. And, and it makes me look back on the situation and I'm like, oh God, I wish I never did it. Like I wish it never, because I do think that it changed my brain chemistry mm-hmm. and I am now like almost 30. I'm 29 and I'm like learning how mm-hmm. to use my brain in an efficient way. And that all many people my age have to say that. And I but I've just accepted it. Like first I was so upset. Like when I was like doing the weaning off process and lots of emotions come ask, out during what is that. It, what is it like when you get to that point? Cause I'm curious. It, it was, it was the feeling of like, and I can't know. I don't know if this would apply to everyone. I was struggling with my mental health already with like depression. I was like mm-hmm. feeling very like directionless and I didn't have my life figured out yet. Um, so I think when I was using the pill to then be like, but I still want to get out of bed and make progress and do it. When I stopped or when I started weaning off, mm. I was like sinking really low and being like, mm. and I had to assess, is this me? Is this the pill? And as time went on, actually, when I got to Paris is when I started like stop, when I had weaned off enough where I like stopped taking anything. This was in August. Mm-hmm. Um I had realized that there are external things that can really help you. Like if you are in a place where you feel inspired, if you're practicing like gratitude, I'd really think that gratitude like rewires the brain and, and like creates those feelings of dopamine, serotonin, Mm -hmm. exercise, being outside really it's naturally helps it reproduce in the brain. And then, um, what else was it like music music right so i'll do that every morning now i'll put in music Mm. that's like high vibe not nothing that like fills my mind with schmutt um and it will get me out of bed and it feels like adderall to me and i'm like that's that's good to hear because everything you're saying i have it that's like the biggest thing like i'm like a sloth if i'm not on it i will sleep 
all day. I'll be kind of like dazed and confused. Like I'm not even on drugs, man, or like on shrooms or whatever. I'm just like, what is happening? Cause like my brain, like it's used to those chemicals, like giving that like push, that caffeine for me. So a hundred it's I, I have also I don't it's too far away, but um new tropics. If you ever want to do the detox process, I wouldn't recommend it when you're in school. I think that like Adderall, especially if you've been on it forever, is yeah. great when you're in school, you know? It, it just got to the point for me where I was like, Okay, I have a creative job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I need to I, I can like create my own schedule. Like I need to I don't need to be on this anymore. Um so for me, it, it made sense to go off of it. But I also have been taking these nootropics. Have you heard of nootropics no, what's before? That? It's all natural, supposedly, but they do have like enough caffeine in it that is equivalent to an um, a cup of coffee. So, but then it does other, oh, what, what, what is it? I forget. It's like L-theanine or something along those lines the that like pretty brain. produce like the good mood producing, mm. but all natural. And I really like them. I take them on days when I need an extra push. Mm-hmm. I'll send you the link yeah, for yeah, it in, in case you want to try it out. But that really helped me wean off. Um, there's definitely thing. There's like supplements that you can do because it it is like you do you, have to train. You, you for- know what I'm talking. Like it's tough, and yeah. it's like it's. Tough. I think definitely, like you said, like like a big like understanding my body more, like. Yeah, working out for sure. Like that is like, you know, I know like it feels good. Like I have a TRX, all that shit, do that. And then every Friday, uh, some of my friends who I've met, like we go to like, uh, you know, the beach and we just, we, we do like a meditation. Then we jump into the fucking ocean and like for- Meditate it, yes. Oh my God, so, the ocean, I miss. Yeah. Something is so magical about just like floating in the ocean and just like, it, it really helps you empty Well, your the serotonin's like, they go like, like especially like, like, okay, we have SoCal water, but we're talking like San Francisco water here. Like, let's keep in mind how fucking cold it is out here. And like- Wait, is it colder than, than uh, LA? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because San Francisco is freezing. Yeah, this is where it's like fucking cold. You know, with the Great White, all this fucking cold shit. So it's like <laughs> you only can be in like the max is like fifteen before like hyperthermia kicks in. So we go for ten, and it's like sometimes we'll do workouts there, but I just kind of go for the meditation and like uh, you meditate. You're just you know wearing your swimsuit. God, it's fucking cold. But like we do these like breathing exercises, like like this whole thing and then like that coldness just you kind of get around it's just like you embrace it and then you just go in the water and you have to dunk in you dunk and then you sit there with everyone and then the water becomes warm but i don't know like you talk about groggy or like i remember one particular morning a month ago like i just was not feeling it i was about to back out but i was like no no bitch boy today you're going like they you told someone i'm not going to be a flake that's a big thing that's the other topic like you commit to something you're going to be there for someone and like um so i went and i just remember after getting it my i just my mood was so much better and like it felt so good and i felt so clear that was the other thing something about it was just clear-minded this there is science that um i just saw this there is science that cold water therapy um create uh, like opens the floodgates to serotonin mm. and it like helps you produce more oh i bet there's like this guy there's- i call Iceman or whatever he's like this dude and he just sits in cold ice water in Norway and he's like he's crazy and then Larry Hamilton if you know who that is uh uh Larry Hamilton's like a like a surfer and like he uh from SoCal and stuff and um he like does like ice baths he has like the cold fucking ice bath after he goes you know swimming working out whatever sits in that fucking cold thing for like an hour or so and it's like you, you just feel it's it's it hurts it feels shitty at first but like yeah man you feel so good your brain just like especially for us that's what wakes us up yes there's i remember i remember reading about this thing um and it was like talking about the three practices that you can do to enhance your mental health and stamina resilience and it helps with insomnia depression all mm. this and it was <laughs> like yeah but um i she's like coming up to me it was saying all these things that are are based on doing things that you don't want to do so intermittent fasting it's like you're fucking hungry but you can you can do hard things and you just you fast until noon or whatever cold showers 
and working out every day first thing in the morning or something and they said if you do that every single day for one month like it supposedly completely changes your life and it makes you feel like you can do anything that you want because you're constantly putting yourself in this position where you are telling yourself i can do hard things and then that just translates in like Mm. all different areas of your life yeah i one of the things you said that i heard like over the summer random instagram like you know like video short vid was like you know don't eat like at dinner time like your body your stomach needs to rest too it's like an organ and stuff and i was like so like well this was like an accident like the past two weeks but i realized like i just haven't eaten dinner i have my breakfast i have my lunch and then i'm just too tired i'm making music i go to bed but like the lately waking up i feel good my stomach feels good you don't feel like bloated or you eat and that's something else like meat and all that shit like Oh my God. Like I just feel clearer, you know, your mind, it feels better. So I agree. Yeah, go ahead. I've dabbled. You're talking about intermittent fasting then. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I accidentally ran into it, but like, yeah, it's working so far. (laughs) I've, I've dabbled with it and it's truly this like that I really noticed the same thing about the energies like if I wasn't eating at first I was like I'm not gonna be able to do work in the morning because I'm not eating until noon something about the digestion um it it really expends so much energy to have to digest food I my brain was so clear in the morning once your body gets used to it you know it takes some time in the mm-hmm. beginning you're kind of like oh you can yeah. you, you can have headaches you can feel low energy once your body reaches that plateau where it's like i can do this i experienced the best results clear-headed my hormones regulated um i was like having problems with that my sleep got way better like i I, i'm trying as i I notice i'm like trying to talk myself back into doing it again because i don't want to do it but it's good but it really does help you feel so much and it's like yeah, like I usually don't eat like a big breakfast. I'll have like what you know, like a uh, one of those like Beva bars, whatever those little like bars, Bevas. I don't know yeah. what they're called. I just eat those. But now, like because I don't eat have dinner now, I just like I'm hungry in the morning. So like it's better, and that's like when I need to think. So like I'll make like yeah. you know, uh, like a burrito, or, you know, vegan burrito, or like you know, or like some toast or yogurt, like an oatmeal, like a whole meal, and then I'm good. And then I'll have like a late kind of lunch, you know, and like, then I'm good. Just two meals a day. And it's, it's been great so far. And I feel good. Like you're saying, and, um, the working out hundred percent, like, even though you're like, Oh, I don't want to do it. It's fuck. I got to stretch. Oh my God. But like, once you get into the mentality, you realize how much you feel better. And it really does help me tackle more throughout the day. When I, when I do something really annoying and like something I don't want to do right in the bit in the beginning of the day, like it does translate in all areas of my life. I feel like I'm like, yeah, I can do this. Like I like, yeah, I don't want to do this, but I can do it. Mm, you got it. It's I haven't been go ahead in routine for so long since I've been here. And because like leading up to the remove, it was just like chaos. Mm. But I miss it. Like I just miss that feeling. I get so into I can't stay with one routine. Like I'm someone that like needs variety. Mm -hmm. Like, but I do love trying out like a bunch of different ones. Oh yeah, because you know, that's like I get that. That's like us ADD people. We gotta we gotta keep bouncing around. Like like we can't it's hard to stick with one thing, even though if it works well. Like cause we like to we're like my mom always described me as curious George. Like, I'm always curious. You got to try something new. Like, he might like it for a little bit, for maybe a few years or a month, but he's going to want to do something new like that. Like, film, look, that's a whole new thing. And it's like, you, we, we're just curious people. And I think that's a good thing. I think we need to have people who are curious and I think trying new things. And that was like even a question I wanted to ask and get into. It's like, like your job is being a creative person. Like, can you go into detail what that is? And like, how does someone, you know, pursue that? And it could be anything, but just particularly what you do, I guess. Well, the world of social media has opened up so many doors. So it's like, because social media is so prevalent and so many people, in my case, need content for social media, for their websites, um, for all these different platforms, it allows me to lead a creative job. It's not 
what I'll say about it, I think I'm grateful for that I do get to lead a life where I work for myself and it's my and it's creative but it's not like what I'm passionate about I'd say like that type of photography product photography lifestyle shots where you just like demonstrate yourself like using the product you know um which is why on my Instagram I'll like share more of my creative work and like my film that was another reason why film was so important for me because it was like yes I did I had a creative job and I like loved that but it was got it gets soul sucking when it becomes like your work mm. you know and like my brain started labeling yeah, it it's as hard my work. it's hard to the so, balance man can yeah. I get it with the music yeah. but continue yep oh I cannot I I'm sure I'm sure of it um but film like helped me like reclaim that but t- going back to what I was saying to with like if anyone that wants to get into a creative space because of social media it's like easier than ever and even learning how to master a skill like I wasn't classically trained in photography I didn't go to college for it and I was really like insecure about that until I did this course that I, I just talked about it my friend Sam who she she's been a freelance photographer for 11 years and she was like you don't need she's like and, and I was in a a program with it was like 10 other people and half of them were classically trained and half of them were and she was basically saying she was like you do not need the title the degree to get into a, a career like this like mm-hmm. your work speaks for your, for itself and it's up to the client to decide if they want to work with you or not and it hasn't been an issue for me like it I obviously I have spent a lot of time like diving into the craft I shadowed Sam this girl that I was just talking about on retreats um so I got to work behind her when she's taking photos of of every all the attendees and like all the different workshops we had going on and everything uh and then I also just learned through YouTube and that's the beauty of the world that we live in is like that's how I started at Mm -hmm. first and I got clients on just based on uh the skills that I self I basically self-taught through YouTube. So that's great. It's you do, but you do, I will say you have to have the passion for the creative part. And that was like always like my, my drive. The business part is a whole nother story. Um, And that's why I do really recommend like getting mentors, investing in programs, coaching programs, master classes. Like that's what I had done with my friend Sam and it completely changed my life like just having that 12 week program so that's where I would recommend like I wouldn't tell someone to get too hung up on the like being a like having the professional training um I but if you're passionate enough about it I would go for it and I would definitely though enlist in getting some type of mentor some type of Mm. class and a community the community is so important like just having now having these friends like-minded because people that aren't in creative jobs they don't get it at all Mm -hmm. like they just don't and it's not even their fault they just just, don't yeah 100 percent. so having that like the support is almost so so vital and keeping you going Mm -hmm. and being like oh someone gets me someone gets the struggle because it's hard work like establishing yourself, making your own company out of like thin air and doing a job that not many people have experienced before, like have much to relate with you about. It's draining and it, it's why a lot of people burn out. But yeah. that community, man, that's how that's, that, that's, that's what holds you down. And it's like, I totally get mm-hmm. that. And I totally like, like this, what this program I'm in, you know, like, I wish I, I just did this instead of college because I felt like I wasted four years. And like, like, it was just like, it was just a waste. And I felt bad, like my folks and everything. I was like, it's like, like, it's like, no, we we're willing to pay for it. I'm like, are you sure? Because like, I, I would have stayed <laughs> kind of expensive. And I'm like, fuck, man. Like, like, like I'm getting more knowledge now than I did the last four years. Last four years, I was just fucking around. I was just like, you know, I don't know, in the desert shrooms, listening to vinyl you know, meeting groovy gals, <laughs> you know, trying to get a van, you know, traveling. It was just like, mom, dad, if you hear this, I'm so sorry, but this is what you spent. So anyways, <laughs> like, 
it was that was my college i was like at university of miami just like partying all yeah the time. yeah so you get it yeah yeah u of a yeah you get it the whole u of m like you get the whole deal so it's like i don't know and now like you said the community like i told you like i didn't pass this one like certification my classmates or colleagues they're studying with me because they don't want to leave like no man behind kind of situation and that feels great mm-hmm. and my mentor and like even my he even said to me like listen like yeah, if you get these certifications, like the door, it opens doors for you and stuff. But he said, I'd rather have someone who understands the knowledge than just pass these tests and don't understand anything. Knowledge goes yeah. greater. And I was like, that opened my, and that took a lot of anxiety off me because like I just get anxiety with tests sometimes. And it's like, it's weird how we have to have a paper to find our level of skill. Like someone could, like you said, know something but not take a surf have the certifications or whatever but they probably know more than the person who does maybe so it's interesting yes experiential knowledge is like the best i don't know mm-hmm. like if, when you're actually applying it and that's why i think we all look back at those days that we took tests and we're like what did that do it, exactly the system's <laughs> broken man the system is broken how they teach us things it's like it's fucked it's- it's wild to think of all the classes like rocks for jocks that I took and like Greek mythology and I don't remember one thing it's crazy to think of the life and the minutes that you spent doing that and now it's like for what (laughs) yeah well what what did like what did I like gonna use like if I ever go on Jeopardy and they ask a dino question yeah I could maybe answer it I feel like a 70% chance on my for me but other than that (laughs) it's like I don't remember any of the other classes I took. I'm trying to think like, I don't know, maybe some like music theory and like, uh, there was like maybe a few classes that I did enjoy. But like, other than that, I really don't remember. Like there was like classes that I, I appreciated. Like I learned about, you know, Brazilian, like the life of in the Brazil. Like I learned about the fajitas and I learned about the slumps and like what the people had to struggle and how the government is corrupt. So I, I appreciate like learning history, like in that aspect, like those classes. Oh, this is something I would watch on the Natural History Channel. So it was cool, like learning that. So like those classes, I felt like were useful. But all the other stuff, like the math and all this other stuff, I was like, I, who gives a fuck? I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to get a tax man to do it for me. Why? Why make me learn this shit? Let's be honest here. Like, like, like teach us taxes. Yeah. Like for God's sake, teach us taxes. Teach us like healthy boundaries. Like I. <laughs> There's so many things that I've had to learn by myself and as an adult, and I just, it's wild to me that we don't learn it in our school systems. It, it's crazy. No one tells you how, how the stock market works or crypto or, or how, or like coding or like stuff that like, what's our world going to be like now? And it's so, cause like you inspired me to like, want to like, I, I know for a fact, like, yeah, I'm here in San Francisco, but I know for a fact, I don't want to be like live in America. Like, I, I, I just know that for a fact. Like, oh, I know I, it's, it's either going to be, like I said, New Zealand, even though they, they're like ex dang Americans. So don't know how that one's going to work at the moment. I'd love to be a Kiwi instead of an American, all for that. Or like <laughs> South of, you know, um, where Bridget live. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name. You know what I'm talking about. Um, or even Amsterdam mm-hmm. seems cool, like with all the Dutch people and everything. Yay. Like, like Europe seems like it'd be cool to live. But is it? hard to get the dual or did you announce you're not american anymore and took their could, it's like how does it work do you have, so have to have a, do you have to have a, like a relative like, to to technically or marry someone like how does it all work marrying is like the easiest route to go about it but but you're a strong independent we, woman carly you don't need that shit I, I won't i won't i was like i'm not i'm going to find a way uh, I'm like determined and I will make it happen whatever way I can, but that doesn't mean like marrying someone. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like if it's right, it's right. Mm-hmm. But like, I will never force that shit. But I, the U S basically makes it impossible to give up the dual. Like they, I, you have to pay taxes in both places. Shit. And in order to give up your U S citizenship or not pay taxes, you have to pay the U S like a huge sum of money just to get rid of your passport. Shit. How crazy is my, that? My cousin, who, so, he lived in Botswana for now and he's trying to get rid of his citizenship. And the U S people are like, look down upon him. Like, why would you want to live in this country? It's because like, and he's like, why would I want to live in the U S you guys are fucked. Like here it's, 
But continue, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, it's crazy. No, no. No, I love hearing the people in different countries, like their different experiences, because it is different. Like the EU, um, that was the other thing was what, what you said was that you can't if you have a relative. So we have Hungarian relatives and my sister wants to move to Europe too. And she's like, I've been <laughs> just like, I think I'm going to learn Hungarian. So if you learn Hungarian, you go, you learn the history, you are able to have an interview with them and speak Hungarian and you prove like your family ties and everything, then you can get citizenship, which sounds like so hard. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it's, I, I don't know, I guess that's one of the easiest ways to go about it, looking back into your family ties. Um, but they have to be fully, I believe, from that country, like not mixed. Okay, not, yeah. Like they have to like our relatives like came from Hungary to So America. what about Paris for you? Are you like French, I guess? Or No, nothing. I don't know French. I oh. don't know. I literally know how to say like the little girl drink water. So how did you get <laughs> Because I did one chapter of Rosetta Stone. Well, how did you get how what, what what was the path for you? How did you convince them to let Carly come into their country? So visas are actually easy. Visas are a whole different ballpark. France, weirdly, I think it's one of the only countries that does this, has a year-long um, year long tourist visa. So all I had to do was just say, like, no, I'm not going to take work away from the French people here. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that works for me because I work online. I work remote. Mm -hmm. Like, I do freelance, like, with clients in my own country. So it works for me for one year, though. And I, I there's not enough information out on the internet to let me know just how easy it is to keep renewing it. I do have a friend here that's been here four years and she's gone through three different visas, maybe scared to apply for the same one over and over again. Um, but it is possible and easy to move to Europe temporarily and get a one year visa. That's my understanding. Um, I am going to go to Barcelona after this. And it's going to be a whole new process because each country is like different from place to place. And so I'm going to have to figure it all out again. But the goal, the goal is to not have to do that one day and just like have my passport here. Yeah, I mean, that that is the like, of course, if you have Fingers a crossed. yeah a relative or something, it makes it I way, don't even... way easier. And Sorry. To no, go, what, go say it. <laughs> I just, I wish that what, what I, just to backtrack, I wish I had more to tell you because I'm the type of person where I just get an idea in my head and I just like go for it and I don't have it all figured out at all. Like I don't even know what part, I'm doing. Part two of this, you, you can come back and like, you know, spill yes. the beans on it. So we're here for it. Good, good. I'll have so much more information, I'm sure. <laughs> just like living here meeting people hopefully hearing what they d have done yeah man that's the beauty of like like that's what i love about like paris it's like it's just they keep that old century vibe there the people the coffee the, the you know the cigarettes not saying cigarettes are good for you but there's something about it with film that's just beautiful when you take the photo of it i yes i so agree i was literally considering buying it just for like the film oh yeah. but i that I just I'm I'm a I really love so many people ask me like why Paris and I think Maybe. that yeah next question. one of the biggest <laughs> things was like <laughs> one of the biggest things was that I and I talked about this a little bit like to to feel gratitude in the day your my day to day that's when I'm presence and gratitude mm -hmm. I feel it so on such a deep level here because mm -hmm. when you're surrounded by so much beauty everywhere you go you kind of just like naturally think that all the time, you know, you're like, wow, look at that, look at that. And I want to take a photo of that. Mm. And I, so I just I'm naturally just very in touch with my surroundings here, very present. And that's what ultimately what made me start here in Paris was because I like felt that energy and I was like, whoa, this is, this is happiness. It's not like even my, my ideals or I'm so different than the people here. Grant, I'm like stick out like a sore thumb. <laughs> you, like, you, you just have to like find the community and get people to show you the ropes or your friend who has the visa. I don't know if she lives in Paris, but like, you know, go out, hang like, 
you know, buy some maybe French clothes, figure out what the fuck they wear out there and like, you know, yeah. get your bicycle and your bread basket or whatever you call it. The whole fucking deal. The baguette. Yeah, the baguette, the, the whole fucking <laughs> deal, man. Like, but that's, that's exciting. Something, something though, I'll say this. Something is really liberating about being this American girl here that like sticks out like and what I mean by that is like I'm the people here are more reserved and I'm very expressive and just like like friendly and and that's so different like people know right away that I'm not from here and I dress different like I dress I have colors in my outfits and like they're more like muted here and because of that I I kind of don't have this expectation for myself that I'm going to fit in. And so I'm just like, whatever. (laughs) But that's a good thing, actually, you know, because you don't want to be stuck like everyone else. You want to be different. You want to be that weirdo or whatever. Like, I think being weird is good. It's so fun. It's it's, like, I want to take my, I had friends. I had, uh, I met some friends in Italy and I was telling him, I was like, I'm going to take my cat for a walk. I got her this leash. And he's like, no, you're going to be the, the crazy American girl that takes her cats on walks. And I'm like, yeah, no, I know. Yeah. Like, I want that. You want, it's going to be so fun. You want to stand out, man. I think that's a good thing. And I think maybe you can inspire people there to like stand out. Maybe that little French girl, she's the colorful clothes. Like, I want to be like that, you know, like, you know, like maybe Honestly, inspire someone. Yes. I, when I talked to my friend, actually, that's from Monaco in the South, she was like, I expressed my concerns to her before because I was like, I just feel really different. That's the only thing I'm kind of worried about. Like, I don't want to repel people based on like my personality being like so different. And like, maybe they can't relate to me or like think that I'm a lot. Mm -hmm. And she was like, she's like, are you kidding me? She's like, they're going to think it's fascinating and they're going to think it's sexy and fun. Mm-hmm. And like hearing her say that to me just made me be like, okay, you don't need to change yourself like to fit in. Like you can just like mm-hmm. go there, be yourself and maybe it will open someone's mind and exactly. make them like- Exactly, never see- change for yeah. anyone. Like like we talked about, you should never, if someone's trying to make you change, then they aren't it. Like, you know, that exactly. they're toxic. Like you can't, get rid of them like honestly because you should never change and that's why like i don't want to be sucked into the united states like their ideas their ideologies and like these things how you should yeah exactly how you're supposed to think like you see it here and it's like even like don't get me wrong like some people in la they're chill but you know majority fuck them i'm just that's what i'm gonna say Mm -hmm. i never wanted to live there (laughs) i know the industry's there but Fuck that. That's why I'm in San Francisco, even though there's no oh, real yeah. music I scene here. Yeah. Yeah. It's like LA, Nashville, New York, or like, you know, Atlanta. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're why San Francisco. I just, cause I like the NorCal vibes, but like, yeah, like don't want to move to LA. Know that for a fact. Nashville. I don't know how you do in the South. I don't know if we'll see either lot, you know, same <laughs> idea. So it's New York's cool, but it's like, I don't know like it's so expensive that's the problem holy shit yeah i bet i guess san francisco it's kind of rivaling it even though you said you got good rent i got but... my solid deal it's kind of hard to leave the spot <laughs> like i people are gonna think i'm stupid for leaving but it's like i i can't just stay because of the spot and like that's the thing like i i like 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 even another idea like you say you're gonna go to barcelona after you know like like home like when we talk about that idea of home home isn't a building home is you Home is wherever you yes. go. Like, like that, like, I, like that took me a minute to realize. Cause I always thought like, gotta find, like you hear people, like some of my friends who are married and stuff, they're like, gotta find the perfect house for our kids to re- live in and stuff. It's like, no, like home is wherever you and your significant other is. And then, you know, you will yes. make your children flourish beautifully. And like, that's what matters. Yeah. I know you, it can be like memories where they were and stuff, but that's just material stuff, man. What matters is like, the moments you make, the memories, the moments, you, that is what matters. And how you feel somewhere. Like mm-hmm. that's like, it, it can feel like home wherever you are. You just have to build that. And like some places you're going to feel it. Like Barcelona, actually, I knew the minute I got there, I touched down and I was like, fuck, did I make the wrong decision? And I was like, cause I felt so at home there. And I felt like, I just like life started flowing really easily. Mm. I was meeting the best people that really aligned with like 
my vibration, really interested in all the same things that I was interested in. Everyone's dressing really free and like very artistic there. Um, But so I have this theory where it's like, it's this feeling that like sometimes you just get instantaneously. And then it's also though, I think home can be um, really dependent on where you are in your life. Like right now for me, I can only see myself in Paris just because I want to really focus on myself and my goals and people are more inward here. They're like the visuals are so inspiring to me. So it's like automatically with my work, I'm so inspired when I walk around here. So that for me at this point in my life, I'm like, that's why Paris feels, it feels like home for me. And then when I go, I know in this next chapter of my life, like it will feel right that Barcelona will be my home. Right now, I love it. I relate with it, but it doesn't feel like something yeah. that would be in my best interest right now. And I think that's so freeing. Mm. Even the fact, I'm sorry for rambling. But good. Like, it's good, man. It, We're here for it. This keeps dawning on me. The fact, <laughs> the fact that, like, I, I woke up in my bed, like, the second day here, and I was like, it's, it's crazy that we can just, like, pick up and go. Like, Mm -hmm. and because I know there's a lot of privilege in that. Like, I have set up my life and built a life that I am able to do that. But it it it's crazy how much we think we're rooted to places, but we really aren't. Like, we can make change and we can build a life that like we want, and it doesn't have to be what you know or what you're familiar with. Like that thought just keeps like creeping in my mind and being like, a year ago I never thought I'd be here, and it's just life is so cool. It, it really is. And I think what like what stops people, because like you can do it, I think it's just money. At the end of the day, I think it's just sometimes it's like, it's money and stuff like, let's say like, for take the part like forget, yes. forget like family or relationship or kids or anything. Let's say you're single, like us or whatever. I, the only thing that could hold you back is just money. Like, you just gotta like, can I afford I it? But you but but like you said, if you're smart and it's frugal, awesome. And everything and you know like like you said don't go spending stupidly like you can do it you just gotta be you know what i mean and maybe sell some shit there's always you could sell shit (laughs) there's the logistical part of it like the money a hundred percent but then there's also the mental part of it of Mm. like you have to break out of that thought of like being thinking to yourself like i'm not someone that does that i don't have the fear like i don't have the courage to do that like there's such a like mental what led me up to this point was like me literally losing everything in my life like and just like rebuilding from like ground zero up to here to be to like where I got the courage to move here because I think a lot of people are in these prisons where they're just like they don't see themselves like that so they don't ever make scary changes or like Mm -hmm. but you you know you may be like yeah but the thing what you said right there is that about like losing you lost a few but you gain more from this that's the thing what you yes. meant like you said mentally like i'm losing this but in reality you gain so much more maybe you lost a few things yeah but it's worth it because you gain more people in your life who can push you and now can help you during times of trouble like you know like it's this idea of you think when you lose just- but you're actually gaining you just don't see it yet because it's the future and that's the thing it's the unknown so you don't really it's just it's interesting it's like your brain can't yeah your brain can't even fathom what it doesn't Mm. know so it's like it does in that moment feel like I lost everything like I remember travel became obsolete so I was like my travel blog and my travel Instagram I was like this is done like (laughs) like but what that led me to was like uh my job in freelance photography and I feel so much more fulfilled doing this it's so much more aligned with what I want to do and like Mm. my creative pursuits and same thing like with relationships losing relationships I was like oh my god I like this was a failure and like this seven years what was that this waste of my life but now it's like I'm going to end up with someone that's so much more aligned with me and makes me so much happier so it's it does it's so interesting to look back at all the losses and the failures and realize like how it brought you to like where you want to be it I have that's what this whole time period has been around like this whole move has brought me so into my head because I just can't stop and I think that's with any big change you start thinking about like whoa what brought me here and like it's wild 
it, it's been a wild ride. It, it really has because when you look back from where you were like when you're 22 and versus now it's like shit man but look think about this think about your 28 you said or 29 29 think about mm-hmm. when you're 50 or 60 like all that stuff from that and then looking back when even from your 20s like oh. like it's it's crazy and I, it's like like oh. i i look at like i think and you know making it more about photography talking about it, it's like that's why i love taking pictures of elderly people just like you can see it in their eyes the stories that the shit they've seen good or bad it's like fuck what did they see and it's like it's very yes. interesting oh, I love that. It reminds me of a conversation I just had with my sister and like, it's not my proudest moment. <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't share this, but I was like, I was like, why would you ever want to be friends with an old person? Like they're so stuck in their ways and they're, they're so like, um, closed minded. And like, that's, I was just generalizing and she's like, Carly, are you serious? Like think of all the life that they lived and all the knowledge. And it totally opened my mind up to this new perspective. And I'm like, you're so right. Like, it's crazy to think of our lives right now. Think of that being tripled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like but everything you said is true. Like, like some of them are stubborn and stuff. But at the same time, look past that stubborn. Listen to the stories of what they went through. And then, yeah. and that's all you, you don't have to see. That's the thing with beauty about meeting, connection, intertwining with people is that you don't, you can, they tell you a story and you just take that story. You take the parts you you know, connect with. And that's it. You don't have to take the full enchilada here, my friend. You can take what you like yes. and that is what it, and that's the beauty of meeting people. That's why we connect with certain things about people. And I think that's why I love, and that's why I love, like, especially like old people always, I love, especially because I like the 60s. So I love, you know, hearing about Woodstock and all of the stories and hear of how people just had fun. It's just like, shit, man. And like, they lived life back then and it was more, it felt free. And also like we were talking about like, going back to the idea of like you know it's good to have tough love or having a tough life and i think about like the baby boomers like literally that same professor i was talking about like they like they're built different than us like you know you know world war ii and like the shit they had to do and they are willing to go to the army and sign up and sit and lie about their age here i'm trying to lie about i'm young and shit so i don't have to go to the i'm like i'm doing the opposite of what they're doing out here like what the (laughs) fuck like it it blows my mind like like their comparison i want to fight i don't want to fight it's so unique and like you know having having a mortgage and a kid and they're planning and like all this shit and it's like nah it's all like there's some parts of that era which i appreciate like you know working hard and you know um handling your shit but there's other stuff that's like i don't know like you don't have to be a hard ass you don't have to be so hard on yourself you you it's okay like you know for a man to cry or for a woman to speak her mind like it, like there's some things it's okay that someone who's black or asian can you can talk to them or sit next to them on a bus or or whatever it is like 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 there's mixed parts of like like i said there's parts that you appreciate and there's other parts that just was wrong and like which is like everything in life mm-hmm. too yeah it, it really cool. is mm-hmm it, yeah it, it's so true it, it blows your mind it, it so that's why it i think really I think that's why I go find a French person. I th- I hope I think that everyone speaks English. Maybe an old person sitting at the park, old dude, and become the friends. The older people here actually don't speak any English. Oh. The younger people are all speaking English. But I'm gonna try my best. I actually, weirdly enough, um, I have a storage unit here, and. I met a man from the man that runs it is from San Francisco and he married a French woman here. And it was so crazy. I had so many like kismet moments like that where I'd meet people and just to like reassure me, like you're on the right path. And he was saying his experience being an American here and like, how I was going to love it. Um, I met this guy in, in that's also a photographer in the barcelona airport and at that point i was like really being like fuck should i have chose barcelona and he was from paris and living in barcelona and i just felt like that and he was reassuring me like no it's going to be so great for your career and then you always have barcelona like i felt like the universe was just handing me people in my lap ever since i started this journey 
And it's funny to think of how they might not even know that impact that they had on you. Yeah, you know, no, like a hundred percent. No one like that's the thing. Like, and I think about that a lot. Like how someone can make you feel, and like they don't know how you are feeling from it. Like it's crazy. Unless you, your ADD sometimes like me, I have to just tell them, and then they're like, "Oh wow!" Like, <laughs> like, like, like I just I have to let. I just what? You're literally. I told that guy that I just talked about that I met in the airport. I literally told him last night. I was like, I'm so, I forgot. I've been meaning to tell you. I'm so happy I met you. He's like, you're so nice. Literally the same. Literally. <laughs> I don't think people like do this. No, I think it's just like a unique bunch of us who do it. But like you just, but like that's that like whatever the serotonin, dopamine, whatever it is in your brain that you just have that that appreciation and love for someone that like you maybe they're stuck in the work, but we are seeing past it. And we just in that present moment, like we talked about, and like, we just, we appreciate it because wow, full circle on everything, man. This love this. It's I was just with full circle also too, on the fact that like life is so short. Literally what like I would say, you beat me to the fucking punchline. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I was ready to say it. And then you say it. I'm like this motherfucker. Oh my God. <laughs> We love that. Literally, literally, because the, the whole thing about death and the the consciousness, yes. that's what I'm... Fuck, man. Jesus Christ. Yes. Tell people how you feel. Like, just, I, I don't know. And, and I have, feel like this is really um, something that's got me really far in life is if you give love, you're going to get it back. Always. Like, yeah. that's just... I feel like you operate that way too. Mm -hmm. Like we've been both very like verbal with each other about like how much we appreciate each other, you know, and like that feels so good. And, and it's that real does, too. People... That's the thing. It's not yes, like that exactly. fake, you know, like, like yes, being, yes. you know, how some girls are really nice, but really it's just like, it's like mean, nice or whatever. Or that's how my sister explains yeah. it to me. So like, yeah, it's like true. Go, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Continue what you're no, saying. No, no. That's what I was going to say. It's like you feel it. That's, mm -hmm. that's, it's a, such a different vibe. It's, it's genuine. It's, it's pure. All, you know what I mean? And I, I truly do think that humans like have superpowers and like um, weeding out like what's real, what's authentic, what's, um, what's like true, genuine emotion, you know? Mm. So yeah, I felt that with you. I don't even know how I got here, but I think what I'm trying to say is that you just need to spew love out of every part of your body mm -hmm. and tell people how you feel and and but like mean it too like yeah. even like with compliments like if you notice something that you love about something someone say it if you're grateful that you met someone say it mm -hmm. and i truly do think the universe rewards you for it oh a hundred percent i think you have to that's just honesty right there my friend like it's just yep. you got to be true and you got to let someone know and like let's even go like for like like someone who likes like don't drag them along or whatever or, or something like you know like mm -hmm. a relationship or like and you're mm -hmm. just like you've not been like feeling for the last two, like you just gotta, cause that's the, you could be living your life or started working on yourself. You know what I mean? Like, like that's a huge thing or like, or this person or whatever, a client or you're working on, if you're not feeling it, don't do it. Like if you're going to do something, whatever it is, relationship, a project, you know, uh, you know, moving, whatever, think about it, sleep on it and then commit to it like don't yes go all in mm -hmm, 100 percent. because like we said you only live once and like that's why I like anthony bourdain like that's why i love him so much he was just like he's living his life and like he battled with depression by all means like like there's some things yeah. when i like watch the documentary when you have time like the i'm going to it, like like i'm going to listen. yeah it's so good and it's like the Brian Jones How Massacre, that's the, which was his favorite song. It's one of my favorite songs too. Like, like they don't even live in San Francisco. The whole group moved to Berlin because they said fuck America. And I was like, Yeah, man, that's that's great. Like, like I love that. And like their music is just about like, you know, like the song, uh I, I can't even print it's I don't know how you pronounce it, but like it basically the lyrics are just like, you know, I'm with you, but you're supposed to make me feel good. But like, I realized that's not what you're supposed to be doing. And it's like, shit, like, yeah, like I'm not here. It's not your obligation to create my happiness. Like I'm here because I appreciate no. you as a human, not want you to serve for me. It's like, oh, 
transactional mm. relationships that is something that i so i'm leaving behind in the past like i experienced a lot of that throughout my entire life and it was it's crazy to like unlearn what that means and like what un, what unconditional love means like i'm so happy i have my sister um she really showed me on such a deep level like my sister and my mom mm-hmm. and what that means where it's like people don't when people don't expect anything from you in return and that is just like the most pure form mm. of connection that and like the most life changing too. like and you only need like one or two people like that in your life to really show you your value and like just like like bring you a lot of fulfillment yeah. and, and the love and connection that you need and that, that and it just it changes your life you you i don't know how i got on there i just get really like no passionate no no, about, no, no. Like, keep it going this is like you're about to break the record right now with me too on the podcast so i appreciate you sticking <laughs> with me uh that's not the goal i still want to talk to you i'm not just talking to talk like i'm, I'm in it to like here because i, I know, appreciate I it. it but like it. like that's the one problem i have like i'm doing the music and everything is that you have to suck up a little bit or like, you know, um, work for someone to help you get to that level of where you want to be. And it's, I'm so not in that. I just want to be me. You know what I mean? I don't want to be someone's like bitch boy or whatever you want to call it because yeah, it's just like that. That's the problem with the music industry. You got to like work for someone or like be their slave. And it's like, I want to do the freelancing, but music is so oversaturated so I always think um, uh, you inspire me like in the, at least the music way because I'm so passionate. I know that's what I want to do with my life and then photography on the side, but how to become that freelancer. And I feel like it's America is just saturated with people with like who does it here. So it's saturated and there's so many downfalls, not to mm-hmm. be the negative Nancy to that uh, freelance work. And it's kind of just like this balance that I've accepted over time where it's like, maybe the thing that brings in the money and the bread is not what makes you like that what lights you up inside and that's kind of what I had accepted with my work um and if that's the case and say that's the case with the music like the jobs that you're getting Mm -hmm. and it's not and maybe it's someone else's vision and it's not completely your vision it's just so important to be able to have another outlet um even if it's like your own alone time with your music and your own like productions and same thing like that's how I feel with my film like that's what keeps me in it and I and it's so important though to have that creative outlet Mm. um I that's like my 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 tip for anyone that is in a creative job because it the the line gets so blurred between like this is work it's so because like there's points where I like I'm doing like a project or like maybe someone wants to buy a or hires me to do a beat or something or whatever it's like like i just like how i make it you know my creativity but then when they come back and they're like oh do this or do that or this or that like i'm like well fuck now i lost the creativity now it's just a job because they want i mean they paid me and i'm gonna have to do it but it's like now you're changing what the art was supposed to be art is not supposed to be perfect art is supposed mm-hmm. to be imperfect you know and like now I hate and it's it's been a mental thing for sure and it's like that's why I did the podcast like the podcast is not money but it does make some income here and there so it's like trying to find different creative outlets that's the also the other thing you got to hustle out here so you know do we got to do yes I I love that and it, I I love that you know the importance of it too and it's something that you don't even have to do grand gestures mm-hmm. like creative stuff like I listen to this podcast the other day and they were like the way you make your breakfast can be creative and Mm -hmm. like the your your routines throughout the day like that can be your creativity I think there's this stigma against like the word creativity and people being like well I'm not creative but it's like it's I think it's a uh, a part of every single human being like I think that we all need to cultivate creativity I I read a book by uh Brene Brown Mm -hmm. and she was saying that there's all these studies that if someone doesn't express their creativity, it comes out in rage and um, in like jealousy and like, and all these different negative emotions. And she was saying how it's so a part of us, like as a just human beings in general, and that it's so necessary to be able to express that. And it made me just so grateful to be in a job like this. Like, do do you feel that too? Like, 
despite the downfalls. Like yeah. I still feel so grateful because you meet so many interesting people in this industry. Like, yes. like it's not the same old like white collar people, you know, with suits and ties and they just here for the money. You're meeting people who actually care and here for the arts. And it's so, so beautiful. That's like the one thing why I'm blessed every day. Cause I don't know who's going to come into my life and who's going to change it. Like to me, that's what I love the most about being a creative person and like letting however I'm like the best feeling I think I ever had was like, I made like a song. Um, uh, which one was it? Well, there were, I guess there was two. It was, it happened with twice. It was one song called medicine. And then there was one song called my friend. And like, I remember like when I was on Twitter, I don't really go on anymore just because that shit's toxic, toxic. It's fuck. <laughs> but like, I just remember I got this ad, like someone said like, thank you so much for the song. Like, like there, I was like hitting really low to the point where I felt like I should leave this world and like, but your song saved me. And I felt like, yeah. like, because like, you know, like my dad comes home or whatever, and he tells us stories, how he gets these letters and stuff, or like patients are very, you know, grateful, like, because like he operates, you know, takes out cancer and boom, and he, the people are thankful. And like, for a minute, I felt like that kind of same, even though I didn't do surgery, I, I at least mentally like felt rewarding in its own way. You know what I mean? Like helping someone else, cool. I think it's the best reward in life. Forget the money. That's why I talked about that nonprofit uh -huh. idea. Like, that's why. Yes. Oh, it's all about the impact. I think creatives are so cool because we can make people like feel things. It's almost like we can act as therapy for some mm -hmm. people where it's like, or get to know themselves better. Like I, when I listen to music, sometimes I don't understand what's going on in my life until I have a song completely speak oh, to me and encapsulate yeah. every emotion that I'm going through. And then I'm like, Oh my God, that's what was stuck inside my body. Wow. I feel like I need to send you some music. Cause I feel like some of the lyrics, like I've been like vibing, like they're like, like honestly, or just like, is this song about me? What the fuck? Like that's also, yeah. I love when that happens. Yeah. Music, music is such a beautiful thing. And that's why I like also just traveling and learning about different cultures in music. Like I was in Kenya uh, this summer and like, you know, going to like a village and helping out and everything. It was, it was so rewarding of itself and meeting yeah. the children and the Maasai down there and everything. And it was just like, oh, my God. And learning about, like, the drums they use and the lyre and, like, all the stuff. And, and the best part was, like, like, I don't know. They were so grateful. Like, there was a point where I felt like I was intruding into their culture because I was here. But at the same time, like, I realized, like, and they told me, like, they, it's a privilege and an honor that someone – the white man, I guess, you know, is here to learn our culture and not steal it. It's they're just, they're about... just here to appreciate our heritage. And I was like, I was like, one, yeah. not Christopher Columbus, not stealing shit. I'm here to give, <laughs> not steal. Let's get that straight. Fuck that guy. Two, um, yeah, like it was, and it was so hard to leave because they have the first, they have the most like beautiful smiles. Like if you see my Instagram, like if you go, like there's this one kid I have a picture. <laughs> He has the greatest smile on his face. And I'm just like, oh my God, this kid is adorable as fuck. Like, and it's like, it's heartbreaking. Like, you know, like they lost their family and they're here. And it's like, I would adopt you all if I could, yes. you know, fun you all, you know, but it's like, it's, it's, it makes you want to go back again. And hopefully I will, you know, try to figure it out. But like traveling is so, it's a blessing. So I hope it's like so eye-opening and it's crazy that like the things that I've learned the the biggest the greatest knowledge and the greatest knowledge about myself too mm -hmm. has been from traveling oh yeah and it becomes so addicting like just having your mind expanded like over and over again and like in different ways because different places will do that to you mm -hmm. that has just been the most rewarding thing and I have to say it before I forget but like every all of that passion and the love that you just spoke about for for Kenya and the people, like I see that and I feel that in your photos, like, and that is so cool about photography, don't you think? Like oh, I felt, yeah. I felt. Well, that. you said that. Think you said your... that about the 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 my kitchen, which was you know, yeah, because like that's great that you can feel it because like it's like you know, take the VR systems that people wear, like you know, they put it on, they try to feel. Fuck that shit. Like you could just see it through the picture. When a picture you can just resonate with you and you can just feel like you're there, the fresh air or that 
that warmness or like my radiator making the weird sound it makes with the old San Francisco apartment and like having the coffee and yes. hearing, like I told you, the boats and everything. It's, uh, it's really amazing. I don't know how to describe it. Like I feel that, well, that's why I like, I made that like guide and I added your photo. Like, like I felt like the Paris thing, you know, like, like you had like a picture, I think they're like on a swing or something. Um, I don't know what it's called. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, and it was weird. Like, on the, on the fair. Yeah, yeah. On the fair. Like it was, it was, it was like nostalgic too for me because like one, like seeing that photo, it made me think of like, like my folks and me too. We love Dave Matthews band shout out to him. And he has, a photo of like that on one of his album covers. And for some reason it brought me to my childhood. Cause like my dad loves Dave Matthew and like Bruce Springsteen, that whole era of music. And like, just thinking about like that music that we listen to a lot. And just like, I don't know. It was like really like nostalgic. I don't Look know. Look at that train of thought. Like that is so cool. And yeah. that, that, that is what I felt when I look at your, um your kit, your kitchen photo, like mm -hmm. it brought me back. I, it's so funny how the mind works. I was like, oh, that it looks really peaceful and like warm and like and calm. And then I would think back to in my apartment, that's like how I would take photos in West Hollywood. And that was like sometimes the best part of my day when I was really struggling were those little mm. moments where you're like, wow, that corner looks so perfect and so beautiful. Take and that's like what I thought. And then I felt those same feelings just because I looked at your photo. Like that's why photography, I, I think it's so incredible and so powerful it, it's very powerful and I, I mean like for your work do you do digital is it film it's i'm assuming it's digital digital for clients yeah. only um or, and, i've yeah. and and the instagram because everyone wants variety and they want like so they want a lot of different shots it would be so expensive yeah i mean if they were like paying for your film and then paying on top of that for you then that would be <laughs> so. that would be nice but like yeah like like, I, I don't know, but something with film is just so, like I told you, like going back with my grandparents or my grandpa having that book, you know, oh, photo book. I think that's what it's called. The word, I knew it would come yeah. back for me. Like, like, in, <laughs> you know, like a oh, scrapbook there, scrapbook. I, I knew I would fucking come to me. It took me a minute, but <laughs> it took, you know, three hours or whatever the fuck it is. You know, it came around. <laughs> my brain's a little slow, but we're here, man. So it's yeah the <laughs> scrapbook like it's it's meaningful and it's like the memories you make and like oh my god it's just that's that's the goal it's like like the whole whole enchilada people is the memories you make with people and living your best life and, and not afraid to take chances and you know it's i think like in, and having a balance and the biggest balance is like you know we talk about you know you know embracing the darkness but like how do you handle the balance of love? You know, yeah. like I'm not even talking like relationships. I'm talking about just like platonic, like, like right now we're talking about you meeting all these people. They show you so much love. It's sometimes like it's overwhelming. It's overjoyed. Like sometimes I'm too fucking happy and I'm like, okay, come down. I need something depressing in my life right now. Just to calm me the fuck down because this is too much fucking joy in my life. Like, which is a weird thing to say, but you, you get what I'm saying. Like it's, Yes, I do. It's you because totally yeah, do. like what do you do with that? Because like I've been like you know I'm living my life to the fullest, and I'm not like overthinking or worried what other people are thinking of me. I'm just doing me, and um, it feels good and it feels right. That's that's the main thing. Yes, you can feel it. Like your body, literally, it holds so much knowledge. I've been ever since I started doing a lot of work on myself. I started realizing how much my body speaks to me. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I would drive through places when I was doing that cross country road trip. I was like, at that time, I had no idea. I knew I wanted to move from LA, but I didn't know where. And I would go through places, and I'd be like, "Can I see myself here?" And my body would literally, people are going to think I'm a freak for this. My body would literally speak to me in ways where it's like, I felt nauseous if something didn't align, align with me. And I was like, no, you do mm. not. Belong I know. I feel that. And, I hundred percent, like a little bit of nausea, but more like a <laughs> mental thing. Like, 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 like I would just get anxious and I was just like, this yeah. is not it. Like, I don't feel like safe. Feel it. Yeah you feel it in the chest mm. and it's like and then I started realizing like that what I was ta just talking about like that's your intuition and 
once you start tapping into that, like you start feeling everything. Like when you have an interaction with someone, you're like, oh, that, that was like my, my intuition telling me like, that's, that person's not right for me. Or like, or it can do the opposite and it can make you feel like all like warm and fuzzy inside. And that means like your intuition is like giving you the green Mm. light and like, go for it. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. And like, it's like, again, like trust your body you know like yeah. your mind sometimes will play games with you but your body will tell you what it is like you know what i mean mm-hmm. your body it's mm-hmm. connected with you so it doesn't want you to fuck up because it wants to live out here so like your brain it's it has its own it that's a complicated relationship that takes a while to fi- figure out but yeah i think you got brain yeah there's there's so much conditioning from the past mm-hmm. and the brain can literally self-sabotage everything that's in its path it can even if it's good for you like for some reason it's just like yeah. and that's why we talked about like fuck wow full circle again like 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 you meet someone <laughs> who's like a good person and you're like like you know you're not ready and you're like fuck i don't want to fuck this person up like like this is something great and i'm gonna try to do something awful or like like not awful but just like ruin it it's like i don't want to hurt this person so you're like i you're either just realize I just need to be honest and tell them I'm not ready. I'm sorry. You're great. And hopefully they understand and you don't fuck them up too bad or you go with it and you just man the fuck up. That's literally, that is what happened to me. This is what like forced me into this like feeling of like being like, I need to just focus on myself because I met someone that I really liked and I couldn't do anything with it. I was mm. like, I knew it. And my intuition told me it's like, you're going to fuck it up. Mm. <laughs> So I was like, okay, space. I have been trying to tune in and like really like strengthen that muscle because once you start listening to it, you start trusting yourself so much. And then like decisions start becoming much easier in life, you know? Mm-hmm. If you feel like your your body's on your side rather than fighting it constantly and always like dishonoring it, not listening to it. Yeah. That's another goal of this year. It, yeah. Just like really and that goes into the same topic of like strengthening your relationship with yourself because that is yourself. Yeah, it's a huge thing. It's it's hard. I'm like everything we've been saying here, folks, it's like it's not like an overnight thing. It takes years to like <laughs> understand. Like it doesn't not even months, it takes years, like like really like to understand it. So maybe even when you're like really fucking old, maybe you never understand it. Who, who the fuck knows? Like, I don't know. It's just, it, it, it's just, and you time. can backtrack for like years, at least in my experience. A hundred percent. I think, yeah, I think overall mm-hmm. it, it's it, like to take out of everything we talked about. I think you just got to trust yourself, you know, live in the moment and embrace stuff don't don't not embrace don't run from it because it will follow you for the rest of your life it will until you just like because i realize some stuff like you know people talk about mental illness or anything like that they, they act like it's it's a disease and stuff but really it's i mean like we there's well we can't cure it or blah 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 it's like no i'm not trying to cure it i'm trying to be, be one with it like i'm trying to like have it a part in my life you know i'm not trying to fight and make it go away because then you're technically taking away who you are in a, in a way. And it's like, exactly. I want that, you know, maybe you don't, some people don't like it or whatever. Maybe it's, it's a struggle. It can be a bitch sometimes, but like it makes who I am and I appreciate who I am and I'm going to work with it and not give up on it. So yeah, that is, that is the main point. Like spirituality, all that stuff, everything. Fuck. Yeah. There it is, man. We've, I'm proud of us because I feel like we took like 20 different topics and we bridged them together somehow or maybe that's just like the law of the universe like working on its own like magical way here and we're not these wizards that we think we are I don't know I mean it happens sometimes (laughs) but it's it's like a hit or miss on this podcast sometimes like I like well I actually like I like I just had the feeling you know my feeling which is like I I've been waiting for this and I was so excited like I knew like like my gut was like, this podcast is going to be great. So like, I knew it was going to be great. And like the bridges were just going to happen on its own. You know what I mean? Like I had like, when I do these podcasts, like I'll, I'll have some questions, whatever, but like here, I didn't really need the questions. I just knew it was going to flow and it was nice. And like, like, I'm sorry for anyone who thought, like, I hope we did talk about film, like, like in this, I mean, we, we, I know that was like other thing. I mean, I hope people were like, Oh, but like, I like, like this podcast, Grantastic, is about like a spiritual thing. I it was never meant to be like focusing on the music people or the 
the film. It's just people like talking about like their lives and I'm fine with that. But I always, the main thing is about spirituality and becoming yourself. I want someone to flourish and everything that that is the goal of this podcast and it's beautiful like it's beautiful like my uh one of like i guess i did an internship at school and stuff at u of a and like my boss said something like we were having a serious talk and it was like you and me are having a beautiful moment and i'll never forget it and it's like like we talk about moments with people it's like you and me carly like at this moment like people can see it and listen and it's great and they can see what this moment we had but but just between you and I, we had this beautiful intertwined moment, like a beautiful, like it's like a flower growing or DNA. And it's like, you can never nice. break that moment, what, what we had there. And it's, it's, and it's great that people can hear this because I hope this can inspire them to go meet out, go meet people and talk and get out of your comfort zone and like realize there's beautiful people in this world who feel the same way as you and just want to like meet yeah. and grow and just, start something and you should and i just hope you're inspired and you feel love and compassion that is the overall goal here and it's great to meet you in my life and to let let this friendship grow like as we get older and for sure have you on here and someday meet you if i hopefully come to uh france this summer or whatever or come to america if you do but but i wouldn't come to america i don't know (laughs) <laughs> no i feel it i know grant that we're going to meet in person i like feel it in my bones it's happening a hundred percent and i'm so grateful for this like just a, a note for me like i something like this a, a connection like this our talk which is almost four hours now like i'm probably gonna go about my like whole month like so fulfilled <laughs> so happy like it's re- it's crazy how like just an, an hour of my january or a few hours of my january can completely change my mindset and and like make me more open uh, when i go about my daily life and that's how i really feel about connections like this and like uh, conversations like this so i'm, I'm really grateful no and i'm so happy no that of it, course it i'm so happy too and like it's beautiful and that's where like like not to go a full circle with everyone again, but just like you just to make the point here <laughs> is that like we talked about like we talked about the apps and stuff, but it's like like in this instance, I'm glad because I don't know if I would have met you without an app without Instagram. Let's just you know what I mean? That's that's yeah. the part where it like where I'm like in right now, I'm confused because I want everything to be organic and meet people. But I think this is in an instance organic. Like I saw your photos told you you inspire me which is true i wouldn't just say that to say it and this the beautiful uh friendship you know it blossom it's growing but is that organic still even though we met through instagram i have the same thing i have like the same bone to pick with instagram but i will say the 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 in the app without that connection it's on it, you can't last at least i can't it mm. it was it, whenever I go off Instagram, it's because I maybe wasn't having the energy to connect with people or like it, it no, it's actually always to, to goes back to that is like, if I'm not taking the time to connect with people on there, then I don't see the, the, the pretty photos are great and I love them, but they only last you so long, you know? Exactly. So I think that's a huge thing. And then I, and I do think that it's cool to embrace it, even if it's not or organic as how we feel like in the present moment especially in this day and age with the pandemic that's, you know that's, it's like that's the only that's the only it. exception i have right now because no one wants to meet you or if you go up to someone which i usually do they're like get the fuck away from me man and i'm like i'm a friendly <laughs> dude i swear to god i just because with corona and all this shit and i get it and it's hard so even if you don't even even if they don't feel that way you don't know how they feel like I met this really friendly French girl the other day when I was trying to um, get help with something in the supermarket. And, but I don't know how she feels about touching my phone. And I don't know, like, I don't know what her boundaries are with it. And like, so you don't know how someone feels. So you have to be extra on guard. And then you add the layer of the mask and it's like, you don't see the expression in their face. And like that. It's so hard, especially it's it's so hard. Like that's like, Especially I feel like for me, like I'm just I'm not to get like whatever, but like with the whole like, you know, Me Too movement started, like I believe in San Fran and everything and like that whole thing. And then 
having a mask and a dude trying to meet people. I was like, it's like, I'm just a groovy dude who's not trying to hit on anyone. I'm just trying to meet people and just like, just build a community. That's literally it. So it's right. sometimes, and I, like a friend told me, like actually a few friends told me this, like San Francisco is like a place where people are here to like focus on the work and achieve. Like, yeah, there's romance and stuff, but that's, it's not about that. It's here to focus on the work. And I'm like, it's like entrepreneur central. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm for that. I'm here to work, but I'm also here to groove. You know, I want a midnight in Paris kind of moment. I'm trying to go out here and trying to live my life and a magical car comes in and then I meet the person, whatever. I just watched this. Great, great fucking movie. I watched it three days ago. So it's, <laughs> it's weird. Like the, the wavelength here, man, it's, it's, <laughs> it's kind of freaky sometimes. Like this shit is it's freaking like, me out. <laughs> It, it, and it's been like this since day one too it, it has <laughs> like i mean yeah like definitely cause i met amazing like film people but never on this wavelength like shit i wish you like you have to like you have to meet all my other like i call them sisses like all my others they're not my true sisters but like we're all on that same wavelength and i've just like i've been thinking about making like a group chat and you all can meet because i just want people to connect like if i know someone that i know you can vibe with and also maybe you guys can connect for work, then by all means, I want you to connect with that person. That's the other thing, beauty of meeting people is helping others, you know, just not yourself. I think that's a beautiful uh, thing that people should do. Not hog all the contacts, basically. Yes. No, I love that. I love that. I love your like, um, your passion to connect people. I think that's so cool. And that's what makes you so great. And like, that's what makes the podcast so great is because you're so open and you want to get to know people. You have that like genuine curiosity that not many people have nowadays with others. Yeah. And that's, I think that's, I, that's great. I think we're just old souls. I think that's what it is at the end we, of the day. We're just old souls yeah. and old souls are hard to find. So you try to make sure you keep those people and always appreciate them. Yeah. Just know this is going to be like a monthly thing. Carly and I are going to come talk about our lives what's <laughs> happening like a daily like therapy Hello? therapy session with carly and grant like it's gonna be a side thing from the podcast now watch it happen folks like and you can have people yes. and talk hear their problems and then try to help them flourish i love this idea <laughs> amazing amazing so i guess the only other thing is carly let the people know what is happening what do you want them to know uh promote away plug away so my, I guess if I'll start with my Instagram, it's Carly Nog, C-A-R-L-Y-N-O-G-G. -G. Um, I am launching my print shop soon. I am meeting with labs this week. I'm really excited about it. I went, I went all throughout Italy. Um, I'm not going to say Barcelona because I got the prints or got the scans back. I'm not happy. It was a really sad moment. I don't know if that's ever happened to you with a lab. Um, but I went all over Paris, all over Italy. And that was my goal those two months in summer. It was like waking up at sunrise every day. So I'm about to give birth to my first online shop for my prints. Hey. And it's all of my like blood, sweat, and tears put into it. My early mornings. Um, and yeah, I'm kind of, I think I'm going... I think, should I give birth to the idea of this on here? I think I'm going to start posting on YouTube again because I feel like there's not enough information and not enough attention span on Instagram mm. to help people with moving abroad, expat stuff, all of the mental health aspects that go into just like tackling a big change like that. So 100%. I've been feeling really inspired lately to start that up again. You should and that's it. kind of just what I've got going that, on. That's great to hear. I mean, you inspired me with the ADD thing. Did not that I did not see that coming. I mean, I knew we had the same <laughs> wavelength, but then you were giving me ideas of how to taper off this shit. I was like, Hey, look at that, man. That that was so useful. Like for real. Like thank you so much for that. That was that was great. I'm going to keep updating you because I I every day I've been researching, I've been doing all these different things and I coin it as like getting fucked up on dopamine in the morning because <laughs> it's like if you don't have the supplement, you need to do it some other way. Yeah, so. 100%. I think it's great that, you know, you're doing this. And I think a, a lot of people are appreciative of like you going out and showing how you did it because there's not a lot of information. And I don't know if people just like hiding information or like they just maybe just they just don't know. They think it's easy, but 
But this day and age, I think people don't know. And I think it's good to show every little detail, you know, everything yeah. to help out. So yeah, that's what I'm feeling. I was like, should I take on another social media platform? And I'm like, I feel I feel so inspired to do it. I'm going to do yeah, it. Yeah, do it. Be- and I'm getting enough interest from my Instagram too of people being like, oh, I want to do this, but I'm scared and I don't know what to do. And that alone made me be like, I need to do this. You need to get like a assistant or something. Shit, man. You're getting huge out here. You're about to build a company. Fuck. I know. I told my mom. I was like, I want to do everything. Literally and she's like, okay, Carly, calm <laughs> I feel it because we need creative people to do that. And like, oh, I know what I was going to mention. Fuck. We just have to end. I don't know. I don't know if I should bring it up. It's like, it's so like, it's so important though, but I don't want like, this has gone too like, I mean, it's fine. There's no length to it. I'm just going to say that it's fucked up that like the school systems here like they don't show they don't embrace more creativity like some like after school programs they 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 cancel band or music or art and it's like and like i understand science and that stuff is important but like we need to bring more creative like stuff to the schools because like you, you were talking a while back about like the creativities and stuff and it's you know people are they they're frustrated they they bring out anger in the creativity and it's like if we yes. had a way honestly, to go ahead i'm sorry sorry to cut you off but honestly if it weren't for my mom who's a painter mm. like i don't know if i would have had the support or the encouragement to like really go after a job like that like because of the school system i didn't get in the school system so it was like i don't know i think it's so important to have those influences if we're not getting it from school oh yeah a hundred percent a hundred percent like yeah. the creativity matter i think having a, a creative parent you're going to thrive. You're going to do great. Cause like, they're just, they're just like, they go with the flow. They're I'm not going to say they're straight hippies because not He's, everyone's a hippie, but like, you know, they, they, they're more understanding. He's like free spirited though. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, free spirited can mean a lot of things. I found out, I learned in my book, like, <laughs> like you could take that like groovy, but then also like, I guess orgies, but that's a whole other fucking thing with free spirited. I learned, but like, anyways, man. Yeah. The point is, be who you want to be be free um be we were about to go on a whole other tangent. it's so it's so easy with you that's the great part like i can go on with this like with like the last ones i don't know which ones you saw like i think i did one with drew and then like with jaime and then uh with kim and like the, kim. Yeah, yeah um like it was fine like we did them and like but with those like i like i knew like like i mean I love those guys. That, I want to make that clear. I have nothing. I love them. And like, they're my friends and we talked all the time, but like, like it was straight film and it was fine. And like, but there's so only so much you can talk about with film to like, you know what I mean? And here I could talk about whatever. I don't even, I, I wanted to talk about like how you made the whole, like how you get into the labs and do it all at home. But we kind of went a whole different direction today. <laughs> didn't know what to expect before this I was like because I told you I was like yeah nothing's off limits I don't care I'll talk about anything but I didn't know where that would lead so I don't know this has been so awesome this is like I I have certain topics that I love talking about when I'm with people and we we hit all every single one of them oh yeah I feel I feel good I feel like I just went to therapy in a way and I just like <laughs> like I just I got it all out good. our worries are like like our thoughts and it's like and like this just shows you this just shows you you don't and this might hurt therapists but you don't need to pay someone because sometimes i feel like therapists don't know what the fuck they're doing and like they just don't really listen but you're a close like like a close or just as someone who like like i feel like you just know me how you and i know you whatever but it's like i never met you which is just mind-blowing but like we it's weird it's weird but like we talked about like stuff that happened in our past like just openly and that's the beauty of it just being open and just understanding that, and how to react that's what i mean it's not weird that like what that oh, we talked about that it's weird that we haven't met in person and i feel this connected to someone like that's what's that and i'm gonna go back to it that is what's so fucking cool about the internet like yeah. I, it's wild. it's it, it's wild that like your dm to me yeah just like changed this yeah man connection. i like i when i go on it when i am on instagram like i'm like talking to you i'm not like i talk to like a ton of my 
followers that I've had over the years and like people I've done retreats with but like in terms of film you're definitely the person I talk to the most on there and Hell I'm like yeah, so grateful yeah th- 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 well it's you or Jaime Jaime and I like he, like I, I want I want to see his yeah, account. yeah yeah I'll send it it's like Como Yama or something it's really funny and it's like he's really good and like oh my god you definitely definitely watch that one because like we we talked about like so many things and about like about like grant's life and then like he was laughing because we were talking about grant's therapy somehow like this other episode i had we got into like about him and his life but then somehow he started being a therapist for me and talked about how do you really feel about this girl i was like how the fuck did you become the host and i'm the guest like (laughs) it was so it was just an interesting kind of thing like grant's life but yeah like honestly like and that's the beauty because i've been thinking of like getting off insta like i understand you gotta post and that's also how i make like you know here hit me up or here's my email or whatever but i'm at the point in life like I'm, i want to like feel free you know i want to break free and it's like i get those feelings yes. and like that's why that's, right. that's why like i'm so glad before i am going off or like I'll, my account will be there but i'm just gonna be less you know focusing here like you have my number and like I can now, like if I text you or text me or whatever, you ever, anything going in your life, here for it. You know, we like we're here to help right. others. And that's why I have, it's great to meet you. And and also with like Jaime and also with Kim have like the numbers hit them up. So like, you know, and it's like I know there's other great people out there and like probably could connect. But like, like I said, over it will happen. It will happen. Like we'll meet. I'll get your number and we'll all have these conversations as well. And. Hopefully I can connect you with these people and these people. And then you all can have your own separate conversations and grow and flourish with one another. That's the whole point is helping one another. I would love, love, love to be connected. And I'd love, love, love to meet in person one day. I feel like it's going to be, it's going to be quicker than we think. Oh, it's going to be trouble. Once we meet, it, it, <laughs> it's game over for everybody. Like 280D people, <laughs> fuck. It's gonna, you're gonna walk the cat. I'm gonna walk some weird animal like a cow or some shit. They're gonna be like, who the fuck are these ticks? <laughs> we'll be taking pictures of it all. Oh, yeah. Film. You know, wearing groovy pants, bell bottoms, you know, like yes. flower shirts, you know, um, fucking oh, random yeah. sunglasses, have a sitar. They're just gonna be like, <laughs> who the fuck are these people? Yeah, that day's gonna be <laughs> yeah. great. That, that's what I'm looking forward to life is like, like, I swear everyone it's coming to an end. I swear to God, I, I'm making the full conclusion here. The, is that pandemic is that like, well, I was just going to say, oh, is that what you were I, I, I was like, fuck, let's not introduce a whole new, no, no, dear, fuck, <laughs> dear fucking God. No, I'm not going that. I could, but we're not going to go there is, um, <laughs> is um dear dear god that now that has ideas over here um is that is that i won't oh my god yeah is me is meeting up with everyone so far who i've met Mm -hmm. and like i don't know like like this is like a daydream idea but it's like everyone lives in this amazing house together and we all just live there and then live our lives and we all still you still live your separate life and still do whatever but then you have everyone i mean it's like college in a way or like roommates but it's like i don't know i just yes, love uh, living yeah co-living or like a, a commune and that's a whole nother discussion yeah, for yeah. communes oh my god but like but you know i just <laughs> i love being around people and don't get me wrong i still i still like my space by all means i need to you know refresh 100 percent, but yeah i just want to like and that's the thing once i once we meet up or jaime or any of these people it's not going to be just like a week it's going to be two weeks we all or whatever it is or maybe we all just go to kenya or some shit and like yes. like yeah the film group is oh, amazing i would so love to travel with you and like everyone all these film people and, oh yeah and oh that would be actually my ideal trip is traveling with people that shoot film because you look at I'm going to go off on another tangent. I'm going to keep it short. You you look, we all look at the world in a similar but unique way. And I think that's what makes us all um, really connect. A hundred percent. I think, yeah, I think the connection is strong and it's amazing. Yeah. Damn, that's a whole conversation I want to open. But all right, everyone. All right, this is fantastic. Thank you, Carly, for coming on. We'll definitely obviously have you on again. Maybe we'll do even like Grantastic and then just Carly and Grant 
and just like have because on here you can have people come on it's like a live i guess this is why i switched over from zoom and like we just hear i'm dead serious just hearing what's going on and people because i enjoy get, talking like like you talked about like my brain i feel good now my day is in a great mood and it's just like can't wait I'm- same i'm going to bed so happy tonight but i it's gonna bleed over into all the other days i know it that's I'm that's really what we good. love to hear yeah i'll let you know when this drops and everything everyone thank you for coming on the grandtastic if you stayed this long that's amazing um yes. i hope you <laughs> hope you stay hydrated be yourself flourish and thank you thank you for having me of course